Did you hear what said said? Did you hear what said said? Did you hear what said said? <laughs> craft then go all in on it you yeah. know it's what you tell people you know you tell people like or i tell people all the time it's like what we tell them is like uh hey man if you're gonna do something do it to the full extent yes you know what i'm yes. saying don't don't be one foot in one foot out you yeah, know just, all in man just because you like to hear yourself talk you know mm-hmm. and so it's like well i want to do this podcast stuff so it was like oh, okay well you know i did give chris my word and i said it was going to be up by this time and then um i it was really bothering me. It was really stressing me out. And mm-hmm. I was like, do you like this feeling? You know, yeah. do you like this feeling of stressing out about it? Mm-hmm. No, I, I don't like it. Well, then stop. What What can we do to, you know, stop this from happening? You yes. know, and it was just it just reverted back to like exercising and everything that I do. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like if you don't like the way you look, you don't like the way you're thinking. If you feel stupid, read. If yes. you don't like the way you look, exercise, you know, all these things. Mm-hmm. If you don't like editing and taking it a long ass time to edit, Figure it out. Yeah, and Look ma- up invest in you, quality equipment or do what you got to do to help the process out. Right. You got YouTube. Yeah. There's no excuse nowadays mm-hmm. on why you shouldn't have you should you have full access. It's not like back in the 90s where it was like you got to go ask somebody around you that knows how to do whatever. It's like, mm-hmm. nah, dude, like there's a how to book or a how to video mm-hmm. on YouTube on, to on do everything, everything. man. Yeah. Literally everything. It's uh. <laughs> I mean, if you know what you don't know, then that helps you out. And that comes with awareness. Right. But if you're not aware, then now you're not even helping yourself out. But if you at least know like, okay, I don't know how to do this, but I know that I need to know how to do it. Right. You can always just look it up, especially with YouTube. It's exactly. like, there, there's really no excuse. It, it comes down to how bad you want it. <laughs> exactly. And, and I want it pretty bad. I want to make it to where it's like, hey, dude, I'm going to work on this. It'll be up tomorrow evening. Or... You know, be a man of my word is really what I'm working on a lot much more. So, all right. Now, go ahead. You're you're (laughs) good. And here we go. Chris. Hey, what's going on, man? It's good, man. I'm good. Uh, What were you about to say before? Uh, Honestly, it was just that, um, well, like uh, anything that we do, Uh right, you got to make sure that you go all in because that's the only way that you can actually have the opportunity to, like, like to advance forward, right? Right. You can't do things uh, half-ass and then expect to get like half of the results. That's not the way that it works. And, you know, with this podcast, the way that you're looking to, Mm -hmm. what you envision for yourself with this, it has to require you doing literally all the things that you're able to control, right? You can control, you know, the quality of the equipment. You can control the knowledge coming in. And if we want to do something for a living, then we need to be willing to go all in and be willing to do things that make us uncomfortable. That's literally the only way that, like, we can have uh, pretty much the opportunity to have more, right? So if you want to do this for a living, then in every way possible that you can think of is like you need to go all in and that applies to pretty much anything like if you want to if you want to have a an elite level of marriage you need to make sure that you're doing mm. all the habits that align with that if mm. you want to have your business at an elite level all your habits need to reflect that that uh kind of similar what we were talking about last time it's it all comes down to your habits and it comes down to having non-negotiable tasks that align with what it is that you say that you want and then you just operate at that level and eventually the you'll have what it is that you want as long as every moment of every day for the most part you're you're living this way right you want to you want to have this life then your habits the way that you think literally everything what you consume needs to be all within this uh level of vibration basically it's, it's literally like okay hey if i want to have a badass life i need to live like a badass basically yeah you know well thanks for mic dropping yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you mic dropped right. dude that was good <laughs> nah. yeah no well welcome back Appreciate yeah it, that was Thank a you. hell of a welcome back uh statement dude yeah i, I completely agree it's a, it's an all-in thing mm-hmm. and uh you know that's you know you can't tiptoe if you want to be, well, I mean, you can, but like, really, it's, it's not about tiptoeing no more. Mm-hmm. Uh, for some of us who do listen, um, which I've been looking at my analytics, so it, most of them, I'm actually at a 40, 
42%, it kind of changed. It was like 48, 42%. It's bouncing back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. But 42 to 48% women. And uh, this goes for YouTube and Spotify. Nice. And then uh, 52 to like a little bit, like sometimes 54 or 56% men, mm -hmm. right? It just depends on what it, each episode kind of flicks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But so it's like, okay, so I'm half and half on it. But then here's where it's interesting at is um, most of our my age group that's listening right now is anywhere from what's it, 18 to 23. So 23 to like 35 mm. is like the age group that's really listening. Now I have some outside of 35 um and this is youtube and spotify mm -hmm. right so it's like okay so that's where it kind of so what i'm trying to get to is is that there is no f one foot in foot out at 20 years old mm -hmm. not even at 19 because i do have some people who are like it's like 18 to 23 it's like three people four people right younger yeah. cats which those could be people who are like 15 16 lying on spotify saying that they're yeah, 18 yeah for real though for <laughs> but, real <laughs> but seriously so you know for them even it's great to hear that there's no foot in one foot in one foot out if you're in your 20s or your 30s it's either all in or all out yes either you like hearing yourself talk mess and you love hearing yourself you know this is uh you know what i'm trying to do it will stop take those words out of your mouth mm -hmm. i'm not trying i am doing this yes. you know what i mean yes. like i hate i was with my boy uh, who cuts my hair and he was like you know it's no more of i'm trying to what he's working on in his life it's like no i am gonna do this i will do this and i was like dude i love hearing this it's been a week because i go weekly it's like it's been a week since i've seen you and last week you were saying i'm trying or i'm doing and it's like now in that week i was like i'm not sure what happened but you've flipped it. He's like, oh yeah, I'm irritated with it. And it's like, well, that's where if you're 20 in your twenties or thirties or no matter where you're at in life, it's, you got to get all in and whatever it is that you're doing and have a purpose or a goal set, mm -hmm. whether it's in your marriage, whether it's in your fitness life, whether it's in your educational life, it doesn't matter. Right. It, it just, you have to, that's what kind of what I wanted to talk to you about today was um, the quote unquote, our new year's resolution, mm -hmm. right? Um, I know you've been listening to certain podcasts. I've saw, I've seen recently, uh, certain guys that you put on clips of that have their ideas of what quote unquote new year's resolution. I say quote unquote, and I'll get to that in a little bit, right? We yeah. will get to that. Cause <laughs> I think we have the same exact understanding without, I don't even know if you do or don't, but I feel like we would of what a new year's resolution is. Mm -hmm. And uh, Goggins has been given his New Year's resolution opinion. Uh, Rogan has been given his opinion of New Year's resolution. And it all seems to be aligning all across the board of what that means and what that is, right? Mm -hmm. And so what is a what what do you think when you hear someone say, Hey, this these are, you know, my New Year's resolutions or I mean, do you even hear people talking about that? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, of course like um there's how the like how most people would consider a resolution and that's like okay hey by this time so new year's resolution by the new year i'm going to or i want this right and the thing is though in my opinion what the issue is with these resolutions is that they do not have any action backed by them right so for example what i mean is like let's say oh i want to weigh a certain weight i want to lose 50 pounds right which there's nothing wrong with that the idea is there right so it's not an entirely negative thing but it usually stops there they don't necessarily have actionable steps daily actionable tasks that they can actually do that will eventually take them to 50 pounds less right you don't just wake up today and be like okay hey uh, i'm gonna be 50 pounds less and then that's it it's like no what's going to produce those 50 pounds less well chances are you're gonna have to work out right you're gonna have to eat a certain way you're gonna have to change habits you know so that way it can actually lead to that desired result right and those habits they're going to be composed of, of actions literally actionable steps so it's not like oh hey i need to work out it needs to be more specific than that right so it's kind of like we're peeling an onion we're getting into layers with it and it's like okay hey uh what does my workout need to consist of well i need to do a uh, 45 minute work uh 45 minute walk outside since i'm not going to the gym today right very minimal task but that's very effective or it's like okay hey i need to do my 60 minute weight training workout uh, let's say you got lower body today and you hit that it's more specific and whenever you have your 
whenever you have actual actions in mind and you work on them on a regular basis, a uh, daily basis, ideally, then eventually that resolution will actually happen. But the issue is, is that people will just say, oh, I want, I want, be I want better finances or it's very vague stuff, right? I want to feel better. And it's like, which again, it's a step forward, right? But if you're just taking one step and then you expect to already be there, then no, you're, uh, that's, that's ignorance. It's like, Hey dude, you need to actually have actual actions that you can take to where eventually this desired result will happen. The only way results happen is by actual actions. And that is the main issue that most people have in my opinion. And from what I've noticed is that they do not have actual actions. And especially in this day and age, I mean, you can YouTube these things. You can reach out for help. People who are experts in what it is that you want to work on, whether that's fitness, whether that's money, your marriage, your mind, right? It's all going to follow the same principles. And these principles, in order for them to work, you have to be accountable and you have to actually take responsibility for your life to do the actual tasks that are in line with the resolution. Right. 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 Yeah, I agree. So with that being said, um, we'll go back kind of almost how we did on our first one. Mm -hmm. So for somebody, let's just use the example of losing the 50 pounds. Mm -hmm. And you're saying it's not backed by because I'm sure this person who wants to lose 50 pounds wanted to lose 30 the year before, 20 the year before. But now it's up to 50 because it's like, you know, or even if it's not, you know, it's just like it seems like some people have the same resolutions every year. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, we don't want to do that again this year because, you know, I, I want to lose the weight, but it's like I did that last year and I want to have a new, new resolution. Mm -hmm. So it's like, that's not, but just for the sake of the example, if somebody, let's just say, wants to lose that, you know, I, I know you kind of laid it out, but let's peel back that onion a little bit more, mm -hmm. right? So we'll, we'll do this way. So with our last show, our first show that we did together, it was a great one. I mean, it was fantastic. I had people texting me saying, hey, man, just watch that. Sh uh, was it chapter three? Yes. With, uh, you know, with Chris. And it was great. I went outside uh, the day, I, you know, I went and work, uh, worked out or I went running or you really made me self-reflect and realize that, man, I'm not where I was a year ago. Or I'm at the worst. I was at an athletic peak a year ago. And now I've regressed and I'm at the worst. And you just inspired me all inspired me to go out and go work out, which is beautiful. Yeah, that's right? awesome, man. It's awesome. Another person called me and he said, hey, I'm starting 75 hard. He called me a week or two before uh, New Year's. Mm -hmm. He says, I need these three things from you. So I need you to uh, one, send me some more information about the 75 hard, which there's not much more information other than all the information really you need is on that uh, template, you know, template like the 75 hard template. Mm -hmm. I think there's like a book that he can. There's also you, a podcast you can get too, a podcast. man. So well, it's what, like, what would that be? It's a uh, it's Andy Frisella's podcast, if I remember correctly. It's called a uh, uh it, well, I know what it's called. It's called Real AF. Uh, but the episode I believe is episode sixteen. There you go. Right, episode sixteen of the mm -hmm. Real AF podcast that will tell you just the seventy five hard portion of the program because I know last time we had uh, mentioned uh, what I've been up to the Live Hard program mm -hmm. where. 75 hard is like one part of that. But if mm -hmm. all you're doing is focusing on 75 yes. hard right now, it's episode 16 of the Real AF podcast. There you go. Episode 16, Real AF podcast. And then, so he was like, hey man, I'm, uh, I'm needing these three things from you. More information on that, which <laughs> now you can get the information. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, the other thing was, I need a book from you. Uh, if you could just give me a book that you could recommend. So I recommended uh, Can't Hurt Me by mm -hmm. uh by david goggins i recommend that to anybody who is trying to get out of that victimized state of mind yeah definitely. um and then the third thing was holding him accountable and that's where he mm -hmm. fucked up yeah because <laughs> i was really like all right well you're making me now accountable for you so i'm gonna make i'm going to to do it just like with thomas you know uh thomas and i i'm not sure if you watched it was chapter nine my recent one uh he, we, he came and ran 16 miles with me and he wanted to do it. He, he tapped at 14, which was great. It was the most he's ever ran in his life. Nice. And I asked him, he was cramping and I saw him wince. Like he like, he like winced whenever he was on that 14th. We try to start up on 14 again. Mm -hmm. Uh, cause we walked 13 and then we're going to finish out the last two. And, uh, 
I saw him once and I was like, well, I can run back home and uh, get the truck and come back and get you. And he was like, no, I'm, I'm going to walk it in. Nice. All right. You gave me your word. You said what you want. I'm not going to come save you. Mm-hmm. So when you, you hold me accountable for something, I'm going <laughs> to gonna yeah. do it for you. So uh, I uh, call him. I think I actually sent him an ear uh, emoji two days, three, oh, yesterday or three, two days ago or yesterday. I sent him an ear emoji and he calls me. He's like, dude, what the hell is that? And I was like, that means I ain't heard shit from you. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, it means I haven't heard from you, bro. Like, so I was like, so we're going to work on something. You messed up because you did a good thing, but you messed up because you're holding me accountable. And so when you get that ear emoji, that's because I haven't heard from you. I haven't seen your activity on my like Apple watch. Because if you share activity on Apple to Apple, mm-hmm. you see when people have finished worked out or oh, nice. whatever. That's what I love that's about badass, man. That's what I love about it. Yeah. I, I told you about that in the past. I was like, yeah, bro, you got to get yeah, an Apple watch. Yeah, I was like, that way we yes. can share activity. Mm-hmm. And I think if you finance it, it's like 10 bucks a month or some shit like that. Like oh, 15 okay. bucks. It's like, real, I don't hold me to that. Yeah. But it's, it's like a, you could finance it over, I don't know, however many uh, years. But it's so... It's so worth it because it'll even tell you like you, you set your rings up and um, like I said, you could share it with people. We, we can compete together. Oh, nice. We can go through nice. a seven day competition. Nice. 600 points is the max that you can get. Um, so it's all cool things. So for him um, right now, we'll, we'll say for him uh, and there was other people that reached out to. Yeah. I mean, they were just like, dude, well, I'm working on it. I'm trying to get better. So I, I've been running into this thing now that now that it's the new year they i've had three people reach out to me him being one and they're like man because we we kind of check in together it's like man i I am i am hurting i'm sore you know i he said that he was going to go to dumbbells and a treadmill this particular person and Mm -hmm. i suggested like hey look if you haven't worked out in like a year two years or three years and you're at the heaviest you've ever been you are going to kill your body trying to get back into like lifting hard weights or lifting uh whatever i was like you need to incrementally take this into let's just see if we can even do 50 push-ups in mm-hmm. in an hour with along with 50 crunches and 50 squats or whatever it is or let's see if we could before you go try to pr and personal record that that mile how about you walk jog a mile yeah or go walk the mile if you're it's i was like remember what chris said it's it's not a challenge of 75 hard this is a program yes we're not here to get to a certain point of like all right we reached the goal now we regress Mm -hmm. no you're doing that because then you won't finish it or you won't get the full effect of what's supposed to do you won't get it you won't get it you are actually haven't got it if you that's your goal is to get to a certain point oh i look good great take pictures and then it's like regress for the next year Mm -hmm. uh, or after the 75 days or whatever it is um the point is is to get to that point and have that be a baseline of like dude this is where i'm starting at now i'm going to see how much better i can get Mm -hmm. and where else we can go and now that this is done you know so for for people who are they're not they're setting goals of like trying to lose weight they're trying to wake up uh earlier Mm -hmm. uh they're sore from the workouts uh the drinking the water is difficult um you know what are these things that you could recommend to them that is so that they don't quit you know like that they're obviously i know it's a commitment thing but it's a mental thing like you haven't done this in a long time right like it's all mental like last time you said you've been doing this half of your life if not pretty much your whole life like training training Tra- yeah training i've been doing it for so, literally more than half my life so your workouts are very extensively t- according to what your capabilities are but for these people if they're trying to get better and using this program or even just a resolution of losing you know weight not even 75 hard you know what what is it to keep them going and to get them uh you know to where it's like a it's, it's they're not getting overloaded or they're mm-hmm. not like trying to you know, they're not stressing their, their mind out. Yeah, I got you. So, um, I mean, this applies to both 75 hard and even just like improving your overall health uh, to begin with is, well, a lot of it is how you're thinking and what you're thinking and what you're telling yourself. So, like, let's, it, again, this applies to both, but like, if you're just focusing on what you're giving up, like, oh, hey, I, I can't have my pizza because it doesn't fit, like, in your, uh, based off your body type, your current goals, it, you just can't make it fit. Or, hey, uh, oh, I have to give up alcohol. I have to give up this and that. When you focus on keep on just giving up, I'm giving up, giving up, giving up, you will pretty soon give up for the pizza, for the alcohol, for whatever it is that you feel that like you're having a sacrifice, which 
nothing wrong with that. I'm not here to talk shit about anybody who enjoys food, who doesn't like enjoying tasty foods. But I would encourage you to focus on what you are getting, right? It's literally as simple, not easy, but as simple as a change in your perspective. It's like, okay, hey, I'm getting the opportunity to be more disciplined. Yeah. I'm getting the opportunity to overcome how I'm feeling like, I don't feel like doing the workout at all, or I don't feel like eating that meal. I don't feel like drinking water. That's now an opportunity for you to overcome how it is that you feel. And whenever you get things done based off the goals that you set and not your basically how you're feeling in the moment, you're now building discipline. You're not relying on motivation because motivation is going to come and go. It's a feeling. Motivation is not part of the equation, but what's going to take you from where it is that you want to be to where it is that you envision yourself is going to be discipline. But the only way you can be disciplined is by having the opportunities to be disciplined and actually capitalizing on them. But the only way you can capitalize on any opportunity is if you recognize that the opportunity is there. So if you don't have that perspective of recognizing that an opportunity is present, then you're not necessarily helping yourself. But I hope this helps at least one person that like, hey, it's just going to take a shift in the way that you think. You just got to think about things differently. And chances are it's going to be different than what the world wants you to think. Like, oh, hey, uh, you've been busting ass for three days. You need a cheat meal. You need to rest. And reality is like you've been cheating and resting all your life. What do you need a rest day for? <laughs> what do you need a cheat day for? You've been alive for 18, 20, 30, 40 years, you know, and chances are you've been resting and cheating all of those, you all know, of those years. This is how I am when I watch your story yeah, on Instagram. So, <laughs> I'm laughing. It's happening in real, real life. It yeah, is. But like, no, so, real talk, man. No, it's like, so serious. Yeah, yeah dude. Absolutely. It's, yeah. it's as simple as that, though, man. It's like, OK, I've been cheating and resting all of my life. It's produced this result. It doesn't matter that 99% of people are telling me this. I do not like this. So I need to go against the grain and do things that I'm not supposed to do. But in reality, we're supposed to be disciplined. We're supposed to have the mental fortitude to be able to be like, hey, you know what? I really want to have that pizza. But again, it doesn't fit into my goals. It doesn't go complement my goals. So sorry, I can't have it right now. That's that's powerful. Right. And you could make the argument that like, hey, everybody is supposed to develop themselves, supposed to develop the skills to be able to do that. Because if you're just living life based on how you feel, then all it takes is for something to be able to control how you feel to cause you to deviate. If you're somebody that, uh, and I actually used to be, be this way, believe it or not, but be real reactive, like having poor emotional control. If something uh, can piss you off rather quickly and get you to react instead of you being like, man, I'm starting to feel annoyed, but you're now remaining proactive because you're able to discern that like, okay, dude, if I blow up in this way, it's going to lead to this type of scenario. And uh, I don't want that scenario. So I'm, I'm better off not reacting to how I initially want to. But the only way you can get to that point is if you're actually practicing discipline. The only way that you can obtain discipline is, again, capitalizing on the moments that will create it. Yeah, you got to do discipline stuff to be disciplined. You got to do if you want to be patient, you got to do things that require patience. You want to be confident, you got to do things that require confidence. You can't just be like, "Oh, I hope and pray and wish." And bleh. no, it's it's not gonna happen, dude. It's like, don't get me wrong, that is one part of it, it right? Is. It There's is. nothing wrong with hoping, especially praying, right? But that's only one part of it. You right. can't just pray and be like, "Oh, well, God willing." Is like, no, you still need to make sure you're responsible for the things that you're supposed to take care of. Mm -hmm. And chances are, it's gonna be the things that you can control. Yeah, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I was listening to a podcast today with uh, uh, Joel Osteen, and he was saying success is intentional. Yes. Even yes. He, even, and I loved it. That's why I wrote it down. Yeah, I was badass. like, that <laughs> is, yeah, that's powerful, it, man. It is. He said. He said. You know. He's like. You know. You don't have. It's just not going to come to you. You know. Yeah. You want to lose that weight, or yeah, you want to do the seventy seventy five harder. Yeah, you want to whatever it is. You want to read more. But unless you go and pick up that book and start reading, you're not going to read more. Unless yes. you go pick up that weight or pick up yourself and go walk, you're not going to exercise. Yes. You could want it all you want, but I, I think that's absolutely right. It's a perspective. And I think, yeah, sure, it could start with hope and prayer. Like, hey, I hope and I want to get better. 
that's a good start. At least you're starting there because some people don't even start. Yeah. You know, they don't For even real, start though. there. They For don't real. even they don't even think about it. But thing is, is that it's like um, don't let your pride get in the way of being better. Yeah. And I think a lot of people have mm. that issue. Yes. I, I think a lot of people's New Year's resolution has a problem to do with their surrounding. Yeah. In its own way. Because if time. if you're trying to lose weight and the people around you are still wanting to eat unhealthy, it's going to be a, it's it, not saying you can't do it. It's just going to be a much tougher battle. Yeah. You know, um, if you're wanting to not stop drinking alcohol, you know, let's just say like, that's your new year's resolution. I want to go the first quarter or the first three months without drinking any alcohol. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like, well, if, if, if you have friends who drink and are always wanting to come around and are always, are always hitting you up. Hey, if you hadn't already drank the night before, because you're most likely waking up hungover, mm -hmm. you know, like my mom, for instance, uh, you know, she said she wanted to start doing more 5Ks. And I'm not trying to like throw her under the bus or nothing, but just as an example, you know, she said she wanted to start doing more of the runs that she was doing last year and stuff like that. She likes it. She feels good. And uh, that's good. You got the thought going, right? Mm -hmm. And um, she did one or two. She did two of them last year. That was two more than she did the year before. Nice. So it was beautiful, Very right? Very, Very good, good, right? So look at it like that. Like, yeah, you could have done more, but hey, it's two more than what you did. Now let's see what's the game plan more or less for this year. Mm -hmm. Well, I asked her back in, uh, I was on Facebook and I seen like a, Houston New Year's resolution run and the date was on 0101 2023 right mm -hmm. 8 30 in the morning <laughs> and so I asked her I said I sent it to her and I said uh, mom would you like to go you know run with me um, I'll, I'll do the walk with you I want to run but I'll do the walk with you because it's a together thing yeah you know? and she said son don't you realize that that's the day of that's New Year's Day and I was like, yeah, I, I realize that that's the whole point, mm -hmm. like to, to kick the year off. Right. Yes. And she was just like, <laughs> I'm probably going to be I'm not going to go. I'm going to be drinking the night before. <laughs> and, and so I was like, well, at least, you know, yeah. I was like, but that's the point. Right. Isn't aren't we supposed to. Aren't you wanting to, you know, get I was trying to like push her for, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> so I, I was working. She knew what I was doing, too. Yeah. bro. She knew exactly what I was doing. But uh, maybe next year yeah. for 2024. Yeah. But it didn't work. My mom loves New Year's. The woo girl comes out and she has a good time on her New Year's. Mm -hmm. um, but I had a different plan this year for New Year's. Yeah. Um, I've been working on it and I have been uh, not to put it too much onto them, you know, as much as what, you know, for just to take personal. Is that I have this marathon coming up next week and uh I've been putting in um, incrementally growing, but I was like doing, I did a 30 mile week, 40 to 50 mile weeks. And then uh, this week I'm tapering. So meaning like I'm like halving everything back down to like 30 miles in a week mm -hmm. to let my body. Um, That's similar to, to uh, training programming. Uh, Literally. It yeah, is. yeah. So I know exactly what, what you're talking about by tapering. Right, right. So mm -hmm. uh so I'm tapering right now. Uh so like when you asked me like how was today, uh it's hard for me to say it was a great day because I'm trying to learn to love myself for it, but it's like I didn't run my nine or eight or whatever that I I wanted to run. Mm -hmm. It was today's an active day. Yeah. So I'm having to force myself to only run three miles and I'm like, I don't like this because yeah. the, the, the person in me is like dude you're gonna be fine for next week just go run six or seven yeah but uh i'm running a 10k tomorrow anyways because i couldn't help it like i seen on facebook again it was like a chocolate run i'm like what the hell is that like do you love chocolate <laughs> no i don't but i like running yeah <laughs> so you know and it's like just to get that my well the reason why i'm doing it is because of uh i ran the 10k resolution run on the first day of the year for a, a lot of reasons mm -hmm. it capped off my 50 mile week so running those six miles put me at 50 miles for the week win nice Huge. right waking up early going to sleep semi early i was a little nervous a little excited you know good good jitters mm -hmm. uh the night before and um you know i woke up went out there by myself didn't have anybody with me and experienced uh, it was experience for uh what the marathon day would be like to put myself in a competitive environment mm -hmm. although it's not like regulated as far as like 
this is your time. It's official. It's going to go into this, like, whatever. I don't, it, it was just like, it's not qualifying for nothing. It was just like a, hey, this is just a fun day. Pay for it. Get up, you know, whatever, run. Yeah. And so it was a lot of that. It was a lot of how committed am I to this journey that I'm trying to continue to instill in myself, right? And uh, so then I seen this 10K pop up for this week and I was like, no, nah, you know, I don't, I don't need to do it. But then there's this like voice in me that's like, no, man, if, if this is what you're trying to get to and this is what you're trying to be, go put yourself in another competitive environment again mm -hmm. and go check it out and see what it's about. You have to wake up early. You're not going to want to do it. You're tired. It's coming up to the week of. And I just felt like if I didn't do it, or if I don't do it, then I'm not going to be ready for game day yeah, I got next you. Sunday. Mm -hmm. So it's like, all right. But <sighs> it was a little tangent. But uh, my thing is that it's kind of like of with with your surroundings of it's all like leading up i mean i have i've had you on i've had uh tom on of like surrounding myself around people or watching people who are you know pretty much getting it done mm -hmm. um and and putting in the behaviors and the goals for it right so like with thomas i was running and i'll just i guess i'll just tie it all up with this to lead it into the next conversation is it's your goals and your behaviors mm -hmm. and your actions that you're instilling right so like for me i'm trying to run this marathon and what i was doing is is that i was understanding that i was looking up online because you have access and it's like okay how do people train for marathons mm -hmm. and it was like you need about 13 to 10 weeks and then some said six to eight mm -hmm. and i think it was on the sixth week that i had like i like applied for the or like registered and yeah. i'm like damn i only have six weeks my first marathon to run how the hell am I going to do this? Right. Mm -hmm. So then it was like, well, look into game plans, like look into uh, training for marathon. So there was a, there was a training program that basically was saying that you want to do these types of runs these days and whatever. So I screenshotted those and I was like, all right, well, let's just do it. Mm -hmm. Well, then when I had Thomas come, I was like, look, man, I'm just trying to pace this 16 miles at a 12 minute pace. I'm not trying to do anything more. I understand that everything in me wants to go and push that 10 miles uh, an hour or I mean 10 miles a mile pace mm -hmm. or sorry 10 minutes per mile pace mm -hmm. which is pretty average <clears throat> and I know I'm below average on it but this is my first marathon I want to see if I can complete it mm -hmm. all these things right everything in me is like dude you're going to be able to kill it like just nice. screw all of it but then it's like no I'm not not going to try to feed into that ego because that side of me is going to make me get injured and not complete it you know okay. so it's like I, well, we'll see on game day Mm -hmm. Maybe the adrenaline, maybe the atmosphere is going to push me to that 10. Who knows? Maybe I get under five hours, which my goal is five hours and 30 minutes. But who knows? Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not. But the thing is, is like it's it's this mental thing of like, am I going to be able? Am I just Cedric? And that's why I was telling uh, uh, Thomas when we were running. I was like all those miles I've been putting in all this like this 10K, all the even the two hundred dollars that I paid to get in, like to pay for the uh, marathon. All this shit don't mean nothing if I don't go and complete it. Mm -hmm. All these podcasts that I have been doing, all this editing, all the equipment, all the it doesn't mean anything if I stop. Yes. You know, all the people I've helped out or we've helped out with our podcast and getting them started, cool. But it's like if you don't keep continuing that, then what does it all mean? Yeah. You know, exactly. if you stop. And um but I have to do the behaviors. It's like what do you want? What's your purpose? What are you doing it for? And what can we do to align with that to get to our to our goal? Mm -hmm. And uh, that's pretty much, I think, what we're trying to get to is like, or what I'm trying to get to is that it, it does start with the mind a lot before, before anything. Um, mm -hmm. I think it starts with uh, what do you, wh like, do you have goals? Do you have a purpose? Well, and that's going to drive you on those days where you're not feeling good. Like you were saying, like, uh, you were mentioning something about like, what do I do? Or like, if you, uh, no, if you, if your goal is for, remind me again, you're saying if it's, if it's for this and you, you, it's not a very solid foundation, you're just going to quit anyways. Yeah. Right? It's like, uh, if it's just vague, if there's right. no action involved, right. then the likelihood for not achieving that goal, that resolution is not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you have actual actionable steps involved in your day, like such as, oh, the 50 pounds is the goal, being 50 pounds lighter, but you don't just do 50 pounds lighter. You 
have workouts that will like lead to that result. Your nutrition, you know, yeah. you have things in place that will for sure lead the result, and it all involves doing right. And mm -hmm. it's a uh, it's aligning your goals with or yeah, it's aligning your goals with actions that are corresponding with that goal, mm -hmm. right? It's like uh, the two need to be equal. You can't claim you want this kind of life, but then your action and habits they're evol they're involved with something else. Right. right, you can't say like, "Oh, hey, uh, I want to be fifty pounds lighter," but uh, you don't have the discipline to stay true to the game in terms of what it is that you want to do. Like, um, not to sound like an asshole or anything like that, but I mean that's just realistic. If you say you want to do this, then your actions will eventually lead into habits, right? But they should be aligned with what it is that you said that you want to do, and. Um, that's where, again, knowing or having the skill of discipline really comes into play because yeah. when you set that goal, you were more than likely motivated, which motivation is not a negative thing. But if that's all you rely on, then you're not going to go far, right? If you're, when you're motivated, use that as an opportunity to build discipline. So when that motivation goes away, because it's going to, you will now have built up your discipline bank, right? By making deposits every single day to where now, whenever you're in a situation that requires discipline, you can actually make that withdrawal because you've made deposits. But uh, you can't withdraw out of a bank account that you haven't put anything in. It's gonna be negative, right? We can't withdraw discipline from a bank that we haven't been putting discipline into. That That's a simple way to go about it. So start with the mind. Yes. Uh, come up with the purpose of like, let's just say for instance, because we keep on using it 50 pounds, right? Well, do you have a date for that? Okay. Losing 50 pounds? Mm -hmm. You know, is that the case? That does, it, or that is definitely it, helps because the thing is like that pressure it, of it, having a certain date. You said it does or it doesn't really? It, it, it does make a okay. difference. Yeah. Like if you have that a certain date in mind, you're now going to be putting pressure on yourself that it's either going to make you into a diamond or it's going to destroy you. One of the two things will happen. And if you really want this goal to happen by this date, then that pressure is going to get you to take action to where the goal for sure happens. Yeah. You know, so definitely having a date in mind does help out. And even if you fall short, you will go, a, you will pretty much travel a lot further compared to if you're like, oh, well, 50 pounds when I can. Right. Right. Chances are you're giving yourself a higher opportunity of success or you're giving yourself a higher success rate if you have a date in mind. Again, even if you fall short, like let's say by December 31st, you want to have 50 pounds loss. But by December 31st, you only lose 25 to 30. You're still a lot further than you are today. Right. That's still progress from where you started earlier in the year. And that's the main thing. Right. It's like, yeah, uh, it, it's like that saying, oh, you aim for the moon, you'll still land among the stars, right? right. Kind of cheesy, but right. it, it's still applicable. It's still true. Right. By having that uh, that target in mind, you're, you're pretty much making it more real. The more details that you can have involved with the desired goal, the likelihood of that goal actually happening is a lot higher compared to it just remaining a dream. Right. Dreams don't happen. Goals actually happen. And right. the difference is action for one. And part of taking action is setting a date or doing your own research. Or it, it could be little things. But as long as you're taking actionable steps that will eventually produce what you want, then then yeah. But yes, I would say having a date in mind makes all the difference then for set sure. A, then set a date. So steps, if we're going to give steps and it's not like, a, you know, end all be all type of steps, but have a purpose change, mm -hmm. but with the change of mind, have something that you want to do. Kind of mm -hmm. like my mom, you know, she, I don't know if she exactly planned for it or whatever, but Hey, you did two five Ks last year. One of them was like a tough mutter type deal. Like where it was like in the mud stuff. Something that my mom would like, I'd never even would have thought. <laughs> and I went and spectated that day too. Yeah. And uh, that's what inspired me to start being like, you know, to kick on my little journey. And, uh, yeah, it's two more than what she would have done. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but, uh, aim small in golf. We have this thing It's aim small, miss small. Yeah. Right. So if you're going to set that 50 pound goal, set it, mm -hmm. you know, don't set a goal either. That's going to, and have a purpose for why you want to be at that 50 pounds. Like, yes. Is it to be healthier for your family? Is it because you want to, uh, you want to, um, 
It could be being able to move around more. If you have yeah. kids, you want to yeah. be able to pick them up and not snap your back. You want to be able to match their energy. Of Thank course, you. it's going to be hard, mm -hmm. but I get this question a lot, man. Thank you. Yeah, but like, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. Like, uh, it could be whatever it is, like, it will really help you out if you can make it about other people. Right. Oh, I want to be the example for my family that, oh, being fat runs in my family is like, no, nah, you can be the game changer of your family that literally changes the trajectory of your family's life. And so literally having it in your mind, like, OK, hey, uh, this goal, it doesn't uh, it's not about me. It just involves me. Right. I want to lose those 50 pounds. So, again, I can have higher energy levels for my kids or if you don't have kids. Uh, I want to be able to be around f for my partner slash spouse, whatever, you know, right. it's uh, it it helps to be able to just make it about the people that you care about. And for most of us, we have at least somebody that we care about, whether that's family, whether that's a person we're in a relationship with or, or, or whatever. If you have kids, mm -hmm. um, you have dogs, you know, you want to be healthy to play around with your dogs, you yeah. know, like, hey, like find something that's pretty much it's going to involve the people that you care about and you make it about them and you just every time you have those thoughts of like ah i don't feel like working out or hey man uh it's cool i'm gonna have a cheat day today you can you can always tell yourself like hey uh is cheating on your kids worth it is cheating on your partner worth it and when people just think about cheating on their partner, they just usually think it involves something like sexual or whatever. But I mean, you could look at it in the same light like, hey, if I'm not honoring what I said I wanted to do, then uh, I'm cheating this person. I'm cheating on my family because uh, I'm being selfish. I'm choosing how I feel over them. And that's a negative thing. You're literally choosing how you feel in a current moment over doing something that's going to make you better for not just yourself right that's obviously a thing but for those around you those that you get to be around and everybody that you come in contact with yeah it's like uh you could be robbing somebody of the inspiration that you should be giving them by you doing the marathon or right. by you doing whatever hard shit that you have your heart on right it, that's right. what it's about it's about helping other people giving them the literally it's like the example of like, hey, uh, I'm just a regular dude who was able to achieve this high level thing in this world, in this area of life. You can do it, too, because we bleed and breathe the same way. So it's it's very powerful whenever you can just make it about other people. Right. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I think for people like you and I, there's these rare people. and Yeah, there's these rare people who just have this sense of like. I'm doing this also for myself and I'm able to still not be like you, you do it for yourself and not be an ego. You're still be able to be uh, humble. Mm -hmm. You're able to do those things and be humble for those around you. But like mine's a lot cause I don't have very, I mean, I have family and stuff that whatever, but it's just like, it's a lot of, for me, it's like, I know what I used to be mm -hmm. and I hate that. Like I always say I'm running away from who I used to be. I feel like when I'm running, I'm like shedding an outer. Every step I take is like shedding a old me. Mm -hmm. When you think about that, our conversation that we started with um, 43 minutes ago is our minds now are totally changing and different than what we were 43. We're 43 minutes better than what we were 43 minutes ago. Absolutely. And, and Absolutely. that's how you have to look at it. It's like, am I getting better with what I'm doing mm -hmm. in my life? Or am I regressing? If it matters to you. Yeah. With a lot of people, a lot of good people, it matters. Yeah, and that's know, where it, um, knowing how you're wired also comes into play. So mm -hmm. if you're the type of person that doing things that make you better, that actually gets you to take action. That creates inspiration, right? Not motivation, right? Motivation is just a feeling. Mm -hmm. Inspiration is actually going to get you to take action. And if right. you getting better than who you used to be yes. actually works for you, yeah. then yeah, take advantage of that. Like that's what, again, it comes down to how are you wired? Do you operate out of making yourself better for you? And if you do, sweet, use that. Right. But for some people that that's that not enough it's not strong enough to keep them going it right. may be enough to get them started and to go a week go a month go six months but like we're uh, talking a lifelong like commitment, forever dude forever then yeah. that's where it's like oh you got to find the things that you resonate with strongest where again like okay if you're wired to do things for other people then find reasonings associated with that 
But yeah. if you're wired to where it's like, hey, dude, I just want to be better. I refuse to become who I used to be. Like, I'm going to... I'm going to sprint so far to where it's like the person I used to be is not even a dot, mm -hmm. right? Not even a booger on my nose is, is nothing. It's like the the likelihood of regressing back is, is not going to happen. So again, knowing how you're wired does play a role in it as well because we are all individuals. We all do operate differently, but finding how it is that you operate will definitely help. And uh, you could uh, honestly ask yourself the questions like, what tends to piss me off? What tends to annoy me? And the things that bother you are usually opportunities for you to actually be the solution to those problems. Yeah, like, and you are the yeah, solution. Yes. You're capable of all things. You know, I hate, I'm, I'm getting to the points where I'm tired of like, like you know, beating around the bush whenever I'm on this podcast and I'm, I'm learning to, but uh, a lot of people I feel like are enabled by those around them. Mm -hmm. And so when, you know, so when you hear things, just understand that uh, a lot of people around you are enabling you. Mm -hmm. If you're overweight and you know you're overweight and you're trying to change and they're like, no, you're, you know, your body is beautiful and they think it's body shaming. Uh, nine times out of ten, they just want you to stay like that because they feel better that you're like that. Yes. And that's a no offense. Yes. Um, if you're trying to read more and uh, you are trying to educate yourself more on some certain things and. You come into a you know you come into a conversation you're like actually and you have some backing on a book or uh, you read articles about whether it's I don't know politics or it could be uh, nutrition whatever it is and you give some input to people who are just what I consider they like hearing themselves talk um, you know you give some input they're not gonna be very fond of that because you they're like well you what are you trying to better yourself with it's like yeah absolutely I am. And uh, they're not going to take, they're, they're enabling you. A lot of it you have to realize is your environment. And you have to figure out a purpose, I feel like. But man, the hardest thing is going to be, is that environment that yes. you're in. Those yeah. friends that you're with, the family that you're around. And it doesn't mean like disown or don't be around your family. Your friends are a totally different story. Now, you need to circle yourself around some good friends. And also, one thing that I am learning is that if you want to get better and you're already in a athletic state, if you go to a gym, let's say, and well, it's just for me, I'll use myself as an example. I'm running right now. Mm -hmm. I know I could probably push that 10 minute mile pace, uh, 10 minute per mile pace for 26 miles for that marathon. Mm -hmm. I know I could probably kick it in and I just might. Who knows? Right. But do I want to be at 10 minutes per mile? Is that my cap? Is that the best I can be? No. No. I seen a guy on uh, Instagram. He's at six minutes per mile for 21 miles. And he's training. Same kind of weeks I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at this dude and I'm like, man, I could do that. But the the reality of the, the story is I let myself mentally go. And now I'm trying to get back into it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm 27 and I'm no longer one foot in, one foot out. I have been so weak uh, on myself and I have taken in, like you said, the norm of the world or the people around you with this. It's always the same BS narrative. Like, mm -hmm. are you t you're too tired? You deserve this. You deserve that. Quite honestly, we don't deserve anything. You know, we, we deserve what we deserve is to go kill our minds, kill our bodies and grow is what mm -hmm. we deserve. But this whole like you deserve a break, you deserve this, you deserve that. I think you just went on vacation recently, but you were mm -hmm. just you were still active. You're yeah. not you're not just I saw the beautiful photos like you're not just just dr drinking and, and chilling and not enjoying life. No, you're like you're you're getting to see the scenery. You're getting to see some history. You're getting to see it's just uh, you're still giving that effort. It's like an active recovery vacation in its own sense, mm -hmm. right? Um, I mean, you still go get it out there on vacation. But it's like I start realizing now that I'm going to have to put myself within a running group. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to surround myself better. If you're the smartest person in the room, you're probably the dumbest person in the room you need to go because to you need to room. go to a new room. Yes. And it doesn't mean that you can't associate with them people anymore. Mm -hmm. It just means that you need to – are you capped out? do you or what more do you want yeah it feels good being in that room with those people and it does because you feel like you're superior but the reason why you won't make that jump and i personally speaking for me 
is that I know that if I go join a, join a running group, that they're going to push me. Mm -hmm. They run different stuff. They go to the track and do like 200 meter sprint, whatever the hell it is, sprints. I hate doing that stuff. Mm -hmm. The reason why when I first came to you, I was like, I'm lifting weights because of running. I could do that all day. I think I used to run a mile or two before I used to come, like probably two miles before I'd come visit you. Yeah, too. Yeah. And then I was like, Dude, I just ran two miles. You're like, that's good. And, you know, I was like, I didn't want to get it in, whatever. I went and got it in. Now I'm here. And then I was like, but I hate lifting weights. I hate it. And then, uh, you know, we got to lifting weights. So now after this 15th, I have other races set up. Mm -hmm. So just for this one, I'm just doing cardio, no weight, weight lifting. Mm -hmm. I might, it might bite me in the butt on it because you got to like lift, you get this leg strong. You got to get your core strong. You got to get all these things strong. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was doing crunches like 500 crunches, 300 crunches after a nine mile, 10 mile run, but it's, it's not, it's like, what more do I want? What am I going to like, do I want to get better? Is this just it? So just wants to say after the first of the year or, you know, the first January, 15 days in, yeah, I did a marathon. Cool. Post it on Instagram. Cause I'm going to, mm -hmm. and I, I, cause I'm, I'm, I'm happy about that and, and whatever, but like, what good is it? Yep. You know, if you don't keep going or if you're not trying to better yourself, what's your PR and then do this for the rest of your life. Or is this just a 2023 thing? And then that's it. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just a lot to ask, like if somebody, so you like um, the whole thing is purpose, right? What's your purpose? What are you doing it for? And what steps do we need to take in order to get us to that, that goal instead of time? Mm -hmm. And after that, it's daily thing, right? So let's just say, uh, I wouldn't, I mean, let's just say if you take all year to lose that 50 pounds and you're going to lose that 50 pounds there, I mean, yeah, you could fall short of the mark, but we're going to lose 50 pounds this year. Yes. What I was taught is to work backwards from that. Reverse engineer it. Reverse engineer it. Mm -hmm. Explain that. So it's literally taking where it is that you want to be, and then it's like, okay, well, what has to happen before I'm there? Okay, this needs to happen. It's like, okay, for me to lose uh, 50 pounds, you need to know, like, let's start small. If you've never lost five pounds, right, you haven't even lost 10% of that, but you know because uh, let's say your doctor told you you needed to lose uh, 50 pounds. Well, it's like, okay, I need to learn how to lose, I need to learn how to lose five pounds first. Okay, how can I learn how to lose five pounds? Well, I need to eat this way. I need to exercise this way. I need to drink uh, a gallon of water. Uh, I need to cut this and that out because these things are slowing me down, right? Whether that's alcohol or certain foods or whatever right but you just peel it back right it's like okay hey i want to get to right here well to get to right here i need to get to right here to get to right here i need to get to right here and it's just finding the actions that will lead to those smaller wins that ultimately lead to the big win like mm -hmm. uh, that's why i talk about it all the time why winning the day is important because when you win every single day right even if it seems small mm -hmm. all those stacked up small wins will eventually make this big ass win N most people do not just win big out of nowhere chances are they were winning small 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 and eventually led to the creation and transpiration of that big win whether they right. realize it or not yes they might think like oh it was a coincidence hey this happened but it's like it's hey, not actually it, look look back yes you like you were yeah. uh you remain disciplined in drinking your water remain disciplined on uh, your food, you remain disciplined with your exercise. That's the reason why you lost the five pounds. And then you just lost five pounds 10 times. And that's why you now lost 50 pounds. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and of course, you know, weight loss, fat loss is not linear, right? So there, it is a bit more, uh, it's not easy, but it is that simple. It, yeah. It's not complicated at all. It's just finding out, okay, to get from, Five, uh, zero pounds lost to five pounds lost. It requires this type of plan and action. To lose five to 10 pounds, it's this kind of action. Because it may be the same, but it may be different, right? Again, right. me being a fitness professional, I can tell you that mm -hmm. it's going to be different. Like later down the line, eventually you will have to make adjustments. Yeah, but, that's, uh, that's absolutely true. I'm learning that now. Yeah, yeah, dude. It's like, it's not yeah. linear. It's not like, oh, hey, uh, you get your starting macros and calories, and then that's going to take you from where you are to where you want to be. Chances are you're going to have to make adjustments down the line. Yeah. And I just use that as an example. It could be whether tracking macros, calories, or a certain way of eating, or a certain way of training. 
And it could also be a change in how those things are done, mm -hmm. right? That's now changing the intensity and effort involved. Like you started off by doing 45 minute walks. Now you do just a small progression of it being power walking, right? Instead of it just being chilling for 45 minutes, that's still more than what you used to do, but now your body's used to that. Now you have to move with a fire underneath your ass and you do that still for the same amount of time. Or you do the same kind of walking, but you increase the amount of time. 45 minutes now becomes an hour or, or whatever. You just yeah. got to, uh, in fitness, the term is called progressively overload. But basically all that means is you got to do more than you did last time, right? You got to, you can't keep benching 135 for six reps. You eventually got to do seven reps, eight reps, 10 reps, or you got to go up to 140 pounds mm -hmm. or, you know, you got to do whatever. You just got to do more. And, um, but yeah, um, again, <laughs> we're going off on a tangent a bit, my bad. That's cool, dude. But, uh, yeah, but no, honestly, it's, it's, when it comes to reverse engineering, though, it's, it's literally that. It's like, okay, before I can get to right here, where do I need to be? All right, well, what actions will involve that, right? And so on like, and so forth. Yeah, it's like in December of uh, December 31st, 2023, 50 pounds. Put it on a calendar, right? Mm -hmm. Put it on a calendar. That's where we are. Okay, so where are we at now? What's the weight? minus 50 pounds new weight or january up here whatever it is december down however you do it same same stuff i get you right <laughs> no. it's all you good man. I mean, dude. so so it's like all right minus the 50 pounds so let's just say you weigh 200 i mean let's say you weigh 250 pounds and just to keep it simple and your new weight's 200 mm -hmm. well think about that how many months one think of a lot of things do i need to get a trainer do i need to call chris Honestly, seriously, yeah, yeah, no, for seriously, like, yeah. do you need to call Chris? Um, he has, he, it's just all, like he said last time, it's all about what you're needing, what you're requiring is based upon pay. So do you need a coach? Do you need a mentor? Do you need to stop following certain people on certain program or certain things on social media? What are you intaking mentally? Uh, do you need to read some more books? What, what are you getting for your information from? Whatever it is. So then it's like, all right, we got a 12 month year, 50 pounds, however much that is, 50 divided by 12 or 12 divided by 50, whatever that is, this is how much ideally we need to lose per month. If that even works, I don't know. You're talking to a fitness professional right here. So reach out to him to see how would I go about that as a con and he does constant. Are you consultations? Do they cost? No, no, the so consultations. That's what's free because that's where I find out if one, we're a good fit for one another. And then two, what it is that you want to do and then of course based off the questions i'll it'll give me a revelation on exactly if i can help you and if i can guarantee you the result what exactly we need to do it, right. it's all based off the conversation because you won't work with them if you can't give them those results yeah that's, like, that's not what I'm, you're i'm not them, i'm not for them in this current season then that that's all it is but like uh i don't just take anybody it's not like oh hey chris how much you charge oh i'll pay you blah and then that's it it's like no dude uh if i can't guarantee you the result then yeah i'm not helping you i'm just taking your money and right dude like uh, and that, that just does, that just makes me feel like immoral like straight up dude like unethical mm -hmm. like i'm literally taking this person's money when i know that they aren't a good fit for my program right you know it, and that's why like it's it's not to say that like, oh, you have to be advanced. You have to be a bodybuilder, powerlifter to work with me. That's not what I'm saying. It's more so where are you mentally, mm -hmm. right? That, that's the main thing in terms of keeping it simple. It basically comes down to if you're really about it, right? And which, again, that, that will get revealed, you know, in the conversation. And then, of course, if I can guarantee you the result. Those are the two things that are required. Like, I do not. Mm -mm. Those are like non-negotiables for me to where it's like, yeah. those two things have to be met before I will work with somebody. If like, right. let's say, um, they're about it, but, um, they're just like, uh, for whatever reason, we're just, we're just not a great fit. Then, uh, I'm gonna let them know straight up. Like, and I've had to do this. Uh, I want to say 
since I started doing this in 2017, three people so far where it's like, hey, dude, like uh, as of right now, I don't see myself being the coach for you because uh, I can't guarantee you the result that you're looking for. And I do not want to waste your time because if we proceed forward with this, we could potentially get further than where you are currently. And the last thing I want to do for anybody, whether I train them or whether I just have a conversation with them is have them regress because uh, I'm here to make people better. Even yeah. if that's going to involve me not working with them right now. Right. Even if it's like, hey, uh, build XYZ habits first. And once you build those habits, then we could uh, schedule another call and then see if we're now a great fit. There you go. You know, like it's just integrity, being, being honest about it, man, being real yeah. about it. And that's more, like you said, it's more, that's honestly more respectful more respectful from both parts and both parties that would make me it did make me feel comfortable yeah quite honestly so yeah so you lay the plan out and you have a goal you lay the plan out and then it's like what behavior so then you start asking yourself like do you need a mentor do you need uh, and, and a, an honest mentor not somebody who's trying to grab your money you know um do you need to you need to get the team on board mm -hmm. uh thinking uh the recent uh never finished with uh David Goggins, he's mm -hmm. talking about having his, uh, I think he was talking about his, it's not the foxhole that he was speaking of. It could be the foxhole. I just read about it. Like I think right. today actually, and isn't he it, talks about the foxhole. Isn't it's, it having like somebody in your group or ha it uh, that might not be the foxhole then it was another part, but it was talking about like, basically it's like, it's like this. It's like, uh, you can help me remind me if, if you remember, he was talking about when he was going to go run those 245 miles. Uh, that race mm -hmm. he picked out four people who were going to be his pacers i think was uh i might even get his wife's name wrong but his wife was one of the trainers but not or yeah she was one of the pacers but what he was like he's like i didn't pick out people who could run 245 miles or an ultra or anything mm -hmm. what i picked was was the people who had the same exact mentality as i did because they understood the goal and the purpose of when I was going to get into those dark moments, whenever, whatever, they understood what I needed in that case. Mm -hmm. So in that same sense, when you're starting to make these goals and stuff, it's not as simple as just making a goal of, I just want to, you know, lose weight and just go about my, cause you have other people around you. You have other things that are going to go on. You have friends that like to drink, don't drink, whatever the case is. So you have to start getting a lot of things in line. Do I need a mentor? Do I need to start, who's in my corner who I can reach on that's like when I don't want to get up for me an instance I'm wanting to get up back at 4 a.m again and start working out and start running in the morning who's gonna be my partner that says hey are you up are you running mm -hmm. are you getting it in like they're not gonna be like oh you don't feel like it well it's, it's okay cool, man you you earned your rest day like Nah, if they think the way that you do, they're going to be like, hey, man, nah, you need to get your ass up because you said you wanted to do this. Yeah. It doesn't matter how you feel right now. You said this at the beginning of 2023. We're now six days in and now you're responding a different way. It's like, nah, it. because yeah. I love you. I'm going to hold you to this high standard. And it's love. And that's what it is. You know, it's not yeah. love if it's like, oh, well, gee, uh, Maybe here's a pacifier. It's like, you don't love that person. You're not helping them get better. Mm -hmm. And that's how you can make the argument whether or not if, if it's true love. And yeah. that's where having a team, having people around you that are, that actually love you, not like they're comfortable with who you are right now, right. but they actually love you. Meaning they want you to get better. Right. right. And they, they uh, think on the same wavelength as you. Like those things are very important because I mean, e even if they don't think on the same same wavelength as you, as long as they understand how you think. Yes, you yes, know what I'm yeah, saying. Because because they might not be there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But as long as they get like, okay, I understand these little basics that he wants to get it in. If I don't see, if I like, like for instance, I probably worry. I would worry if I don't see you really on Instagram post after like maybe two three days. Mm -hmm working out yeah. I, i'd be kind of worried because i'm like well i know he's always got something to say as far as like motivation and he's always listening to stuff i know he's always has something somebody coming for an in-person workout what's going on with chris yeah is he straight like i might even reach out like hey bro like are you good yeah. like you getting it in you know uh so yeah it's it, it, it that has a lot to do with it like it, who's in your corner that 
doesn't care about your feelings, but it does care about your feelings they, in a loving ultimate form of love yes. to see you do better. It's mm-hmm. not those people who are around you that are okay. that say, Oh, you deserve a drink. Actually, let's get tore up tonight this weekend because we've had a long week when honestly you haven't quite honestly, you haven't done. I don't think anybody does anything major or that great to go and congratulate yourself with drinking your life away. Yeah. There's nothing that you could do in this world. Even if you become a millionaire, Honestly, if like you win the lotto, oh, let's go get drunk. Like, let's dude, get fucked up. Yeah, it's like, dude, that is the most lamest thing in the world because it's just like you're, uh, reg- talk about regressing. That's the most like, it's a horrible way to celebrate. It's a horrible way in, in a religious aspect, too. It's a horrible way to thank God for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I told my mom the other day that the reason why I do what I do is because I feel like every time I'm getting a nod from the father of like, keep doing that, keep yeah. doing that, keep growing, you can keep feel going it in your spirit. Keep, yeah, keep going. That's yeah. building you. That's something that I th- I have this thing called running with thoughts, mm-hmm. uh, where I run and I like talk. Where I'll do a video now after listening to Never Finished, where he talks about the the vlogs that he does in his phone, right? And uh, it was called exercising your spirit, mm-hmm. and that's what I called it. Exercise your spirit. Is your spirit growing or is it dying? And let's exercise it. Let's break it up. Let's yes. let's 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 liberate it. I'm going to use the restroom real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, we'll pause it here in a second, but uh, I'm going to use the restroom. Uh, when I get back, I want to talk about the small wins that you're talking about, the winning the day. Okay. I want to go more in depth in that because that has something to do with the progression. Yeah, so yeah absolutely. We'll go back. Down. Okay, give me one second. Do you have yeah. to use the restroom? Yeah, might as, well. might as well. Yeah, right. Might as well. I'm eating at this one. I'm good. Bye. I'm good. We'll go to the restroom. It's uh, 444, ironically. Like I was saying, it's just, it's just progress on uh, – because I know – me not being uh you know a professional fitness trainer like you are uh i do understand for me and my world in its own sense of like okay break setting a goal what do i want to do now doing the research my personal self and it is a tough route it'd be so simple but not a lot of people have money or whatever it is to go do that um but it's like okay setting the route of what do i need to do my weekly behaviors to get to my goal Mm -hmm. And let's do that. Let's do it every day, Mm -hmm. right? And one thing that I love that you do every day and you have for the longest time that got me into doing it is journaling. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know one person has reached out to me. I saw them on Instagram saying I journaled today. It was the greatest thing. Helped out my mind so much. I was like stressing out. And it's beautiful, right? Get out of your own head. Right. And this Mm -hmm. is something that we didn't get to touch up on last time. Mm Mm-hmm. So with your winning the day, and I know that's what you do because you'll do win and you'll circle that thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so man. what exactly is winning the day? And yeah, so what exactly is winning the day? So winning the day, uh, I got this from Andy Frisella. He had talked about it in his first podcast, the MFCEO Project, and uh, it's called The Power List. And The Power List is five critical tasks that are meant towards to move you forward towards any goal that you have right they're not goals on there right so going back to the example that we were using losing 50 pounds you wouldn't put lose 50 pounds on your power list because that's not an action that you take on your power list and uh side note these tasks are meant to be things that are not currently habits so for me i've been working out this is year 16 for me I wouldn't put anything workout related on there because I'm going to for sure do it. It could be raining fireballs outside. I'm going to train if I'm supposed to train that day, you know, especially with this uh, program I've been on. Um, I do two workouts a day, every single day, and I'm going to for sure do it. Right. But like, uh, let's say if like uh, reading 10 pages a day is not a habit for you, but that's something that you really want to get down. You would put read 10 pages a day on there. Um, Let's say another goal is, uh, you want to get closer to God, uh, spending 30 minutes talking to God. It could be uh, reading a chapter of word, right? Um, let's say other goals. What if I uh, wanted all of my, uh, whenever I go to sleep at night, which is something I'm working on mm-hmm. right now, is having my entire house completely clean as a brand new day, as if I started the day before. Dishes done, not a single dish in the, in the sink, uh, bed pretty much coming back to a made bed uh to everything's already everything's laid out for the next day as mm-hmm. far as like my shoes my my shorts everything all laid out that way it's just wake up and it's all there for you is that could that also that be a goal be like, like a preparation yeah, goal? yeah yeah absolutely because yeah. i mean uh having orders having discipline boom mm-hmm. that's now putting towards your discipline bank and 
Everybody mm. can benefit from having higher discipline, no matter what it is that you do, no matter what you do for a living, everybody's lives and every area of life will be better with discipline. And if that's something that like you're not used to doing, right. like you can't guarantee that you'll do it. If it's not on the list, then put it on the list. But, uh, if it's something as simple that you're used to doing, like, Oh, um, I'm, I'm just thinking off the top of my head, like, Oh, uh, checking emails, right? If that's something that you already do, right. It may be important, but because you're used to doing that, that wouldn't be something that's critical. Right. That's where it's like, Hey, having critical tasks that are aligned with what your goals are. And right. only you can determine really if like a goal is worth putting on there. Only you really know it has to be critical. Like again, me going back to the example of fitness, like, yeah, I could put uh hit my uh, weight training workout today on there. As soon as I'm done working out, I cross it off. And let's say I do the other four tasks, cross them off, boom, win. It's not really that big of a win because one of those tasks is something that I know I could do no matter what. Like right. I'm already conditioned to get a, my workouts in no matter what. But the importance is making sure that, again, they're critical, they're things that are meant to move you forward, and they're actions, right? And once you do all five things, boom, 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 you cross them off, right? Win at the top of the page because psychologically what that does is it makes you feel good. You made a list and you got all the things done that you said you were going to do that day. You now increased your levels of self-belief and self-confidence because you kept the promises you made to yourself that day. The way that we lose confidence is we break the promises that we make to ourselves. So by winning the day, it's a simple, practical way to literally build confidence, take steps towards your goals, right? There are a lot of benefits to being able to do that. And then whenever you go back from the month, you see win, 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 maybe one loss, then win, 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 another loss. Let's say you win 27 out of 31 days. Like, yeah, that's four losses, but I mean, it's just like a basic scoreboard, right? Hey, what does the scoreboard say? 27 of four, I dominated that month. Boom, that's month one, right? Because if you win the day, most days, right? At least four out of the seven days, every single week, you now won the month. And you do that every single month, you're now winning the year. And then when you win regularly for a long period of time, winning is now just something that you do. You've become a winner because you've won regularly over and over and over again. And if we can build the skills, because that's what they are, the skills of self-confidence, self-belief, discipline, yeah. you know, fortitude, uh, perseverance, the ability to endure, you know, just being more mentally tough, then we we set ourselves up for success, right? And the thing is, we all have the same 24 hours, right? Yeah. But it doesn't take all 24 hours to win your day. Right. If you win your day by like, let's say noon, right? You woke up at 6 a.m. and you got all five critical tasks done at noon. In reality, you could fuck off the rest of the day, but <laughs> chances are if you're a winner, you're not going to, but you technically could. And that's still a win that day because you did all the things that you said you would do. Right. All the critical things that you said you would do. Let me, that's a huge asterisk. Critical. Right? So yeah, it, it has to be critical. So, uh, but that's what I mean by winning the day. It's like literally, um, I got it from Andy Frisella. It's a powerless task or a powerless that's composed of five critical tasks. Okay. So from Andy Frisella, powerless, five critical tasks. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember the, uh, cause he has it on the real AF feed as well. The real but, AF. Uh, yeah. Real AF podcast. Podcasts. It's on that feed. Uh, I, it's somewhere between episode Five and twenty. I can't remember off the top of my head, but Andy like he Priscilla. he has a episode on Winning it, man. I'll day. I'll send you the link, man. Yeah, it's please. very powerful. Yeah. It also has uh this guy named uh Ben Newman, who's uh I'm blanking on what he does. I think he's a uh a college coach for is it Alabama? I don't know, dude. It's some just some university, but he's their uh. Basically, he's the guy who's responsible for conditioning them, not just physically, but mentally, mm. you know, but uh, I'll send you that podcast, man. Yeah. It's, uh, that has changed my life. Like I've talked about the 75 hard, live hard program changing my life, but uh, that was the first tool that uh, I got from him that I've been using since, dude, if I had a guess, I've been doing it since 2016 and mm -hmm. 
there's no doubt that like that's one of the reasons why I have the momentum that I do, why uh, my discipline is where it's at. Like, yeah, a big part of that is like, oh, I've been training regularly. I've been doing things that require discipline regularly for a good amount of time. But yeah. having a practical tool where exactly no matter who you are, you can build these skills up. And that those that tool will definitely do that. Right. And that's what I'm trying to give people is tools. Yes. That's what we're trying to give them yes. is tools, we're trying to help out people. That's our whole, you and I, that's our purpose in life. Yes. That's what keeps us going. And we understand through these habits that we're creating is allowing us to do that more and more and more. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So just to kind of recap it. So it's five critical things on your, and this is a part of your journaling yeah, or, like, or, or is winning the day separate from journaling or so here I'm, I'm going to not a tangent, but I'm going to try to try to like wrap this all together right no, you're good so so someone doesn't get confused uh so when it comes to journaling because a lot of people don't know how to journal so this could be an easy way on mm -hmm. like how to start journaling um so i get it i get a journal right mm -hmm. write out whatever the date right would you write the date okay no yeah yeah okay, I, so I, write, I write the day i journal and mm -hmm. then i put my power list underneath it that's how i do okay, it i have cool. it all in the same place what's your journal about when that's you it's you, is it it's, separate it's, or is it the same does it correlate towards it's a critical five just what's on my mind it okay. could be like i woke up today and uh I, I began another extra round of 75 hard today by the way you know so i put that on there like today makes day one of the extra round of 75 hard and i'm already feeling powerful because uh since i got back from my trip monday night since tuesday i've already been doing some of the tasks and any mental regressions I felt when I went on vacation, I blew past them in a matter of a couple of days. And I literally feel that um, I'm tapping into my super superhuman mode. Like literally, I feel like I'm in a place mentally where I'm the best that I've ever felt. And mm -hmm. having that... Um, so basically, it's like that's all that I was journaling, right? And then, of course, like uh, I wrote out, okay, like... This is what I'm going to have to do today on top of the 75 hard stuff, on top of the uh, power list, like uh, I mentioned, having to go on the podcast today, mm. you know, so it's okay. literally just whatever is on my mind. Yeah. It's just there's no right or wrong way. Right. right? If right. you if you just put like I woke up today and I know change is about to happen. Just a sentence. Boom. That's a thought. But the point is to get out of your own head because that's at least what I've noticed with the power behind journaling is like I'm able to get out of my own head. I'm literally able to put what I'm thinking about uh, on paper. And it's another way for me to reflect because reflection is very important for us because if we keep everything right here, then it's only a matter of time before shit potentially like blows up, mm -hmm. you know, because we have so much in here that we haven't put out, right? Whether that's putting it out, whether that's talking to somebody or talking to God or, you know, whatever you, you gotta, you gotta get the things out of your head out of there. You you gotta get the things in your head out of there. You right. Know? Cause again, right. like if you right. don't, then dude, like, especially if you find yourself like in a stressful situation, then because you've been bottling things up for so long, that could lead to a negative situation. Yeah. You know, and it's, yeah. And people wouldn't uh, think to correlate journaling with them blowing up later in the day. Like um, mm. any day, let me see here. I want to say uh, there was one day, it was the day that I was, we were driving up there uh, on vacation, is uh, I didn't journal. And then that day, I just felt mentally off. And it, it's crazy, dude. It, but it, we are our habits. Our life is our habits. And whatever... Brother, it is yeah. insane, right? When you create these habits, and it's insane. I took an active rest day mm -hmm. uh, two weeks ago, I think, and I was with my family, and they were like, "Are you good? You okay?" I was, I straight up, I was like, "No, I'm not. Nope. <laughs> I'm not okay. Actually, I didn't run today. Today is my quote unquote recovery day. So all I did, I think, was I went golfing, mm -hmm. right? Which is, you know, it's good and all. But I was like, honestly, I, and you can see it in my face. I, and I'm a hard person to hide my face. Like when my face is irritated. So you're going to see it. You're going to see it in my energy. And I mean, even with the cold shower, I even, here's the thing. I even went, worked out, ran the other day, last week, went, worked out, ran, cold shower, went to get the haircut, came back. And it was like, oh, you have to shower. Mm -hmm. Are you going to end it with the cold shower again? <laughs> nah, I said, you already took the cold shower. Yeah. So guess what? 
I didn't. Mm-hmm. I didn't end it with a cold shower. I already took a cold shower. But I was like, eh, it should, I should be all right. No, 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 no. It's totally different. Yeah. And I haven't done it again. I was like, I'll never, I'll never do it again. Because <laughs> I didn't end with the cold shower. Not only was it habit, but it's what the cold shower does for your body mm-hmm. also uh, that gave me this. But because I broke the habit and also due to what cold showers do for you, I didn't have a good rest of the day. Mm-hmm. So it's starting to, re- I'm starting to realize like, yeah, your habits are a huge thing and you cannot bend or break them. Otherwise, your day is going to be totally toasted. Not toasted, but it's just not going to be the same day. They need to be non-negotiable. Non-negotiables, yes. and that's where I'm getting to. And mm-hmm. it's just like stop negotiating with yourself. And that's a lot of things. A lot of people are losing to you. Yes. You lose to you every day, and there's two yous. There's a you that wants you to do good, wants you to be better, all these things. And there's this other you that just can't stand that side of you. Mm-hmm. Can't stand that side of you. Religious talk. God wants you to do good every day. The devil can't stand you wanting to drop alcohol or drink less. Mm -hmm. Some of you here drop alcohol. I can't do that. Yeah. (laughs) So drink less. Okay. (laughs) So drink less. But I'm not not an enabler. So (laughs) drop alcohol. Uh, Or, you know, go take that walk or whatever. There is something that cannot stand that side of you. Dude. And, it, you know, he wants you to break those. Ha- he don't want you to break those habits. But, you know, you have to win the battle against you every day. And the great thing is with what you're talking about with journaling it, it it's a self-reflection of that. Mm-hmm. And if you're more of like a because I don't know what kind of learner you are. There's a auditorial visual and a kinesthetic learner. Mm-hmm. If you're more of a visual learner, then um, David Goggins suggests in his book, Never Finished, uh, there's an audio book and there's a actual uh, a physical book that you can read. Physical book has, uh, and I'm selling this stuff for Goggins then, I guess, right? But the the physical book is good for those who are wanting to read. If you're, in, if, for instance, doing the 75 hard or if you're just in, uh, you know, on a, um, a, visual learner. a visual learner and you like to, to read uh, and see it. He has pictures in there of his feet and injuries or things um, that is not in the audio book. Uh, I purchased the audio book because I was going to get that before the physical book and I wanted to be the first one to get it. I pre-ordered it. Great thing about the audio book is, and that's why I purchased, I sent it to you, uh, is because at the end of every chapter, he does a podcast on the chapter with Jesse, uh, with the guy who does the narrating mm-hmm. and they talk and go further in depth on the chapter. And there's stuff that there's stuff in the, he's so he's such a genius about it. There's stuff in the audio book that you won't get inside of the, the physical book. And then there's also stuff inside the physical book that you won't get in the audio book, like mm. as far as the pictures and stuff like that. Um, but like he, he talked about these things called mental zones, which dude, you would love the mental zones. I think that would elevate you and I'll get with you after the podcast about that. But the mental zones, I've been using them while I work out, bro. And I know you will understand and click to it and start running with it immediately. But uh, and that's a little snippet. That's a little teaser for you guys to go get the book because yeah. it, it, it elevates you. But uh, but yeah, so the journaling is a great thing if you don't like to journal because you're just something about you uh, writing it down or whatever it is. He suggests now that he does a visual uh, a, a, a video. Mm. So if he's laying in bed and he doesn't want to get up because that inner that inner bitch is talking to you, he will record himself. Mm. and talk to the phone and then watch it later same thing for good things he will record himself and talk to him while he's doing good things and then watch it later Mm -hmm. um he will record himself daily so if it's like a daily thing if it's if you're more of a visual learner and you're more of a visual person record yourself Mm -hmm. hey today it's a quick one minute 30 second vlog you know hey today um like i did it today running i said i was just talking to myself while i was running and i was just like said you know, today's your active recovery day. I know everything in you is killing you and wants to go hard and is, is just whatever. Don't let your ego get to you right now. We are training. This is a setup for we're going to take inventory and analyze this training process and period for the past six, seven weeks mm-hmm. after January 15th, after your marathon. Then we're going to decide, hey, these are the things we're going to keep. These are the things we're going to take out and mm-hmm. we're going to do inventory. And I was just running and talking to myself. So if that's easier for you, then try doing the journaling through video. Yeah. There's multiple ways to do it. Thing is, is it helps, you know, it helps. Absolutely. So for the way Chris does it is he'll do the date. 
He'll journal about what's on his mind, what he has to go throughout the day, whatever's on his mind. And then you do the critical five, correct? Mm -hmm. Then he does this critical five of things that he, Jordan Peterson talks about, which I love. Do you know who Jordan Peterson is? Yeah. Beautiful man, dude. Clinical psychologist. If you don't know who Jordan Peterson is, check him out. But Jordan Peterson talks about this thing. And I hope I don't butcher it, but he talks about there's order and chaos. Mm Mm-hmm. You have order, and if you have too much order and you're just stuck in order, that's comfortability. Then you have chaos, which is just like, man, this stuff is chaotic, and it's just out of my reach right now. Mm -hmm. There is a line. There's a borderline between order and chaos where they meet, Mm -hmm. where it's like, okay, I've got this all kind of together, but this is a little challenging. It's Mm -hmm. a little chaotic, out of my control. Like a happy medium. And happy medium, and that's where we all need to be at at all times Mm -hmm. with our lives. Like, where is that line for you? And be there all the time. Because you need something to strive for, but you also need order, because too much chaos is gonna make you quit. Mm -hmm. Too much order is gonna make you regress. Yes. So where is your order and chaos within your own life? So as far as the critical five goes, take that into consideration of like, Mm -hmm. All right, what's too easy for me? What's my daily tasks? Whatever. If you get up, you you make your bed, you brush your teeth all the time, or if you go work out and exercise like you say all the time, then that you don't need to put that on your critical five, mm-hmm. right? But if if working out isn't your thing, or making your bed isn't your thing, or if you don't brush your teeth every morning, which you should, <laughs> some people don't. Yeah, but, no, no, no. For but real, it's a real thing. If it's something you don't do, it'll help create discipline and those other things. So then start putting that critical five down, and then uh. I, I, get that to achieve uh you know start crossing those out at the end of the day and like you said not every day is a win you're gonna try your best to make it a win mm-hmm. and honestly starting off you may not be at that 27 4 ratio you might be half and half mm-hmm. still better than not doing it at all yes. the journaling still better than not doing it at all yes. you will probably see an incrementally huge growth yes one percent is one percent right yep. of positive mm-hmm. every day for a whole year, you the foundation for 2024, I mean, the foundation that you're setting now in 23 will be it's so, you're going to thank yourself at the end of the year. Yes. Instead of freaking out and panicking like, damn, what did I do with my year? I waste, You're going to be like, wow, I didn't, I failed a lot, but through failure, you succeeded in a lot of areas mm-hmm. as if you didn't even challenge yourself. If you didn't put yourself in that quote unquote chaotic uh, scene, mm-hmm. you know, and that uncomfortability, a lot of people call it that too. Yeah. So. Um, I, I had a lot of questions last time about like, you know, what is journal? What do you journal or whatever? Um, and, and that's really helpful, man, uh, to, to date it obviously. Cause I like dating it to see your growth, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And then I, I love that. I probably, honestly, I'm going to take that into account for myself. I'm going to change up my stuff because I don't do that critical five stuff. Yeah. And, uh, but I always, every day I do want to work towards something better. Uh, somewhere in my life, but I have it up here, mm-hmm. right? Now I journal, but I have it up here. Yeah. Uh, well, no, I journal on paper, but as far as the critical five stuff goes of my like, you know, what am I trying to work on? I have that up here. So now I'll put it on paper and I'm going to take that into consideration because even thinking about that gives me a little fire in my heart. No, seriously, nice, in my soul, Heck I can I feel it right here. Yeah. Like this excitement of like, <laughs> all right, I'm looking at this paper and I'm like, what, what can we, what do I not do? What do I want to do? And then go do it and then come back. So, okay. So here's the question. Do you come back at the end of the day and revise? Do you do this in the morning? Do you do this in the afternoon? Do you do this in the evening time? When it's, do you, it's as I'm going through the day. Through the day. So like, okay. uh, let's say uh, complete client adjustments. That's one of my things, right? Cause it's, it's for my business. It's also to serve my people, right? Complete it's to ensure that it does, okay. right? So once I was done, I get my journal, I cross it off and I move on to the next task. Right. Um, I still have some tasks remaining for the day, uh, one more. But um, once I finish that last one, I do the final cross off of that fifth uh, remaining task. And then I write win exclamation point and i circle it and like let's say um but you create my question was do you you create all five critical things in the morning yes okay the day of the day of of, like Mm -hmm. uh i mean you technically can like let's say the night before do your power list for the next day that's not necessarily a wrong thing power list but uh yeah but uh, I would uh, I would encourage you to do it the day of because the day is fresh, especially in the morning. Your brain is gonna be working the best that it can be, you know, that day. Mm-hmm. Whereas if like uh, let's say you just did it at night, like you may 
put something down, but in reality, you could have used something that's more critical, right? Not to say that what you put down wasn't anything, but um, you're setting yourself up to have the make the furthest progress by having as close to being maximum critical tasks as possible. And if you just do it later in the day where fatigue has settled in, then uh, something may slip your mind. It could be a small detail, but I mean, it's the small details that lead to the big things in reality. Mm -hmm. So that's why I like to do it the day of, because it's meant to be a daily thing. It's not like, oh, I have a power list for the week. It's like, no, that's no longer the power list. You now have a to-do list for the week, which... Not wrong, but like in terms of the yeah. following the system, the protocol, it's meant to be done daily. Mm -hmm. you yeah, know? but a power list, I mean, uh, not a power list, a, uh, a to do list is more like a grocery list. Yeah, exactly. It has no like, there's no I, power it, behind it. it, it, it yeah, that's why it's called a power list. Yes. Yeah. And after the 2016, that's like six years of, of doing this. It has grown you a lot. Yeah, man. I mean, and I see, I've, <laughs> I can honestly almost even say like every, I mean, at least every time I watch one of your stories, I always, not always, cause you don't always post it, but I do see like when, mm -hmm. or I see like, or I hear yourself, I hear you say sometimes like today wasn't a total win, but you know, it's better than not even implementing or even trying these things. Yes. You know, I don't think that just don't get discouraged if you set it out and you're not you're like, after a week of trying it, you're like, man, I haven't even, I can't even done three out of the five every single day. You know, it, I, if, even if your thing is one thing on your list is probably even journal every day until it becomes a habit, put it down. Yes. Would you, right? Yeah. Cause again, that's part of building your mentality, the right? That, that's making you better. Like yeah. as long as it makes you better, how is that not critical? It's like, right. it's just ask yourself to those each is your own. Yes. But, which is beautiful though, because if you're not asking yourself these questions of like, it's going to create a, I could already see if, if you do it, it's going to create a ball of like, it's just going to roll into a positive thing of like, you just doing a lot of stuff. It just opens up a world that you're probably someone who's not, not into, not even thinking about. Yeah, man. It's going to start asking yourself like, dang, what do I need to do today? That's going to make me better or what is it that I, what are my critical five things like what would be something that i don't do that i want to do but i want to hold myself accountable now towards that thing or if you're losing like regularly ask yourself what's causing me to lose mm -hmm. but if you're not writing these things down then one you don't even know that you're losing and you're not even having the opportunity to see like what's causing you to lose mm -hmm. if is it like your lack of time management is it that uh your um these tasks they're not um they're not concrete actions right they're just too vague um it, it could be numerous things but uh if you reflect which going back to the journaling that's where that can help out mm -hmm. but like being able to see say, okay what's causing me to win what's causing me to lose or what's causing me to get these tasks done but not these tasks is it the time of the day is it the kind of task is it the mm. mental conversation that I'm having with myself prior to beginning the task? Because that could be another thing that stops people. Like uh, if we think about it, like just going back to working out, usually it's the story we tell ourselves leading up to the workout that's more challenging than the actual workout himself. Because once you're in it, it's like, well, I'm already in it. I, I can get it done. Mm -hmm. But it's getting started, right? So... It could be literally as like, okay, how am I thinking prior to beginning this task? Am I bitching and complaining? Then yeah, you're putting yourself in a negative state. So you're entering this critical task in a negative state. Chances are you're not going to get it done. Or if you enter it with a positive state, like, man, uh, I really don't feel like doing this, but you know what? Uh, I'm going to keep the promises I made to myself and you get it done. That's empowering. You're li you're literally like taking control of your life. And that's how powerful this tool is. It's like instead of you relying on hoping and chance, it's now based on what you do or right. don't do. Right. It's, it's as simple as that. You you make you make life a lot more simpler. You know, it's it's not easier right? But it's simpler and you increase your chances of actually having a successful day, which will turn to a successful week when all the days are successful, which will turn to a successful month when all the weeks are successful. And then you can have a successful year if all the months are successful. It's it's a, That's how big of a domino effect it is. And it's something as simple as like, did I do all five things today that I said I was going to do? Mm -hmm. Simple. But simple. You, you, it's... 
it's like it's so powerful why wouldn't you want to do it why wouldn't you at least test it yourself now i know that you i agree why wouldn't you even try it Mm -hmm. you know it's worth a try yes yes um so when do you um I imagine that at the end of the day, you you know, because you you said so you create this list at the beginning of the morning, uh, you journal, create or you do a little passive, uh, sorry passage, and then uh, the five critical things. You're crossing it out throughout the day, right? Um, when do you go back and like at the end of the day, do you reevaluate these things? I know you say you're kind of fatigued or whatever. Do you set a day at the end of the week on like a Sunday or a Monday to reevaluate the week of like, hey, what are we like a more of like a debrief for yourself? Uh, do you do it at the end of the month? Usually like, the beginning of the next day, you know, so okay. it's like because uh, when the day is one, the day is one. I put these on here for a reason. Mm-hmm. And then next the next day, let's say after reflecting, I'm like, hmm, I've been doing this for way over two months. Every single day I'm winning. I don't need to put that on there anymore. But if I like, uh, it's just to ensure that I, I'm going about it with a clear mind, right? So by doing it at the beginning of each day, it's ensuring that like, okay, like uh, I'm making sure that everything that I put on there is for sure critical. Cause if I'm making this list in the best state possible, cause uh, a one, another thing I want to touch on is like so the days where I don't do it first thing in the morning, it's usually like later in the morning, like 10 or 11 or maybe even noon, but I've worked out. I've done something to elevate myself, right? Or yeah. I've gotten some reading in, whether that's reading some word or reading my 10 pages that day or talking to God, right? It's like I've done things to elevate myself prior to making that list. Now that's like, okay, that's not a negative thing because I'm going about it in a high elevated state. But uh, that's how I like to do it. Um, I either do it first thing in the morning because uh, I start my days with the cold shower. Then I do a visualization. And then it's like, boom, I'm going into it with, I'm always going into it elevated, basically. I've done something to elevate my mind at the very least and or my body. And boom, then I start the actual making of the list. Because it's like, hey, uh, I've uh, I put myself in a state to win. Now I'm ready to write some shit that's gonna make me win, mm-hmm. so that way I can actually win the day. Right. Does that makes sense. That makes total okay. sense. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah it makes total make sense. Sure. And I, I like that. I'm glad that we covered that. That you actually have some habits that are winnable habits already in, bestowed in you, uh, as far as what you've already put into you, as far as like cold shower. Where you know visual, visualization is that a same form of meditation? I guess you could say. So with or that, like, uh, it, it, for yeah, you. It, like for me, yeah, like, cause uh, sometimes I'll visualize, like, uh, when people think of like visualizing, like envisioning their future, things that they want, but uh, some sometimes I'll use it as an opportunity to reflect on how I reacted the previous day that I knew I didn't react the best. So like, let's say for example. Like, uh, I'm driving and I see someone like coming up on my ass and I blow up. I don't like to be that way because, uh, I used to deal with like that, uh, road rage pretty bad. You said you had reactive. Yeah. I was was, was reactive, man. And so Mm -hmm. like, uh, and don't get me wrong. No day is perfect. Just like we're not perfect. So don't expect to be perfect, but at the same time, don't use that as an excuse to cut corners and be like, well, I'm not perfect. So let me, let me, uh, just cave into being fucked up. It's like, no dude. You don't want to think about it that way. It's only if like you tried your balls off that day and you come up short, then you can say, oh, I'm not perfect. I tried. But at the beginning of the day, don't be like, I'm going to try to win. Like, no, you, you're already <laughs> going into it with the idea that like it's cool to lose. Like Exactly. No, and that's what that statement means. Bro. Yes. Not to yes. get like, no, you're to get good, too, man. Like, but I have heard that fucking statement way too much. And Cedric's coming out now. Cause like, I, I, <laughs> I try to keep him locked up, bro. But, no, you're good, man. <laughs> dude, I cannot stand that statement of like, well, I'm not perfect. It's like, shut up. Yes. Like, okay. Yes. And I don't mean it like that. Cause I, I've had people on and they tell me like, you know, I'm not, and it's like, bro, I had my boy on, uh, my boy Bilo. I had him on. He kept saying, you know, I'm not perfect. And I was like, man, but dude, you are a great person. Mm-hmm. Bro, you are a great person. You're a hell of a dad. I didn't even say it then, but he's a hell of a dad, a great person. Yeah, we all know that we're not perfect, but I feel like too many people hear that, that, that well, I'm not perfect. And I feel like they use it as a damn excuse. They use it as a cop-out. A cop-out mm-hmm. to not 
do the habits or well you know i'm not perfect like i'll never reach perfection so why even try it why, why not even it's like no see stop using that stop using that mm -hmm. it's like i am going to try my hardest to achieve quote unquote perfection but it's not perfection i'll never reach it but whatever that is that i think is a an obscene and an, and an, a fantastic human being a, a sculpted body mm -hmm. a educated person a uh, emotionally rational an emotionally like sound person, mm -hmm. a God fearing person, mm -hmm. whatever that is. Yeah. You're not going to be perfect at it. Who cares? I don't even want to hear that. Let's try to get to that point. Be as close as you can Add to that point every yeah. day. Mm -hmm. Like, cause otherwise it's like, you're not working on yourself. And then somebody who is not doing those habits is going to use that. Well, you know, you'll never be perfect. So why even try? Just take a break today. Like, it's like, no, dude, I don't even get out of my ear like, no. because I hate it. It's like, it's like, it's like, just shoot me with a syringe of heroin right now. Cause this is what I feel like when I hear that <laughs> shit. It's like, you are injecting terrible things into my ears right now. And it may as well be heroin. Cause I'm like, oh, it's just like, get it out, bro. Like, like, get it away dude. from me. It's Anyways, like... <laughs> I might even cut that out. No, so you're good, man. <laughs> Cause it, it, no, well, but, real least, talk, but man. it pisses me off because it's like someone around you is hearing this and now you are enabling them yes. because you don't know what someone's going through. Maybe they're going through something right now where they need to hear something that's going to kick them up in their butt to get them like going. And then by you saying, oh, well, you're, you know, you're not perfect. You'll never be perfect. Well, now what if they go run in and they do something completely wrong because you just gave them this weak excuse yes. that, oh, you'll never reach it. Mm -hmm. Of course. Of course. We'll never reach it. Of course. But what is the best thing that you could be in your life and go do that? Yes. What's your fullest potential that you think you could reach and go reach that? Yes. To someone else, they might think that that's being perfect. But to me, in my life, that's probably not. Like, mm -hmm. like, like, like I know even running this marathon that it's only 26.2 and what's getting me to not think about the 26.2 is knowing that either by the end of this year, which I haven't set the goal yet, I'm still working on myself, but by next year, for sure, I am running a hundred miles, a hundred mile race either in uh, Utah. I think it's in Utah or whatever, but I will be running it. I say, I'm not sure this year because it's going to take some time to grow that body and, and get it going. Mm -hmm. But it's like I hear Goggins doing what he's doing and God bless that spirit that's in him because it is amplifying spirits around the world to wake up and start being the most, the best person and the best thing that you can be. What is your fullest potential and capability in life? Mm -hmm. What can you truly reach? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're a bar bender, but how bad can you bend that bar? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, who, yeah, you're reaching out to people and you're helping people who are like, and I've seen your, your progress on people. I mean, crazy. Even, uh, your boy, I forget his name, but he looked good already. He looks better. I forget his name. I don't even know. I, I'm not even, I don't even know, but he was already buff. He was already kind of like abs were showing chest was there, but like now he's even, I could look it up here in a second. Oh, hey, he's probably, I, I think there. it's a uh, Robert. Pro yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah Robert. Cause yeah. you go to, uh, like you go to concerts with him and stuff like that too. Right. Uh, the, yeah. Well, the, whenever the, that's we were him. like, uh, we don't do it anymore, really. But like, whenever we would go but, to like those raves, yeah, yeah like, but uh, he the, would go with me. Yeah. But the prog the progression, like he was already looking good. Someone like him could have been like, "Nah, eh, I'm good. I look mm -hmm, good." Mm -hmm. No, look at the progression picture. Freaking better. Yes. Like, it, it, you can always get better. Yes. You can get better at looking physically better, mentally better, emotionally better, a better lover, a better partner, a better. Uh, better in your marriage. There's always better. And then people are like, well, that's just tiring. No, it is not. You're just quitting. Yes. You're just you're, quitting. You're, you're choosing you're, easy. You're, you're choosing easy. When you it, choose easy, life is now going to be hard for you. Everything. Yes. It starts in everything. Yeah. Everything in your life will start to, uh, to deteriorate. Yes. It, it just will. You always need to be progressing. Even if it's 1% a day, mm -hmm. you need to be progressing. And, and the critical five, I feel like will help out in that. You know, maybe even your critical five, it's like, hey, today I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to go off on my partner if that's something that you do. I'm going to watch my anger today. Mm -hmm. Let that be something that you're yeah, trying to man. work on. It doesn't have to be a physical thing. It could be an emotional thing. Yes. It could be a, a – it just – I, I can't st – I, I went on a tangent, but, like, I cannot stand that saying, you know, we'll never be perfect. We get it. Yeah, dude. We get it. We'll never be perfect. Cool. But just because somebody is working towards something doesn't mean you need to throw that at them because – 
our thought process of perfection or imperfection or whatever our goals in life is separate and different for everybody mm -hmm. in their own we're all in our own race mm -hmm. so honestly for me i'll always keep telling y'all care like goggins have said cool man like you've gotten your uh you have a degree you have your education now what yes now what now what it, it, cool you did it and and he's like he, he said he was on he's running on a treadmill i have it in my archives he's like you know, like, yeah, cool. And we comfort ourselves and we clothe ourselves in this blanket of awards and accomplishments. And we feel great about it. It feels cozy. It feels good. He's like, I, st I take that and I store it away. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what am I doing now? Where am I going to go now? So it's like, yeah, where are you going to go now? Keep moving forward. Because like we've said in the last one, if you're not growing, you're dying. Yeah. You know, if you're not, that's not living by not by being okay with your life where you're at no matter where you're at in life there's always something to do to get better at whatever if you're being honest with yourself if you haven't given up on yourself if you're letting you be you yep you yep. need to beat you every day yes. like cuz you got to beat the hell out of that thing that's holding you back and it's you holding you back it's no one around you mm -hmm. it's, it's, don't play a victimized thing that oh it's this or it's that no, control yourself of your, your variable that you can control is yourself of yes. your habits and your actions that you could take every day. Mm -hmm. What you can't control is what others do, how others act, but you can control how you react yes. to others. Always. You Always. can control, uh, saying no to that drink when there's people drinking around you, mm -hmm. you can say no to that person that says, Hey, it's late already. Don't go get that workout in. No, go get it in. Mm -hmm. It's up to you. If yes. you're, you are where you're at in life right now because you got yourself there. Yes, yes, dude, yes. If you're not happy, if you're overweight, it's because you got yourself there, not because your family is all like that. No, you had the choice. It's your habits. It's your habits. Mm -hmm. if, you're, uh, if you're not as educated as you should be, it's not because your parents didn't have enough money or because of what, and that may be the case, but there's grants, there's ways to make it happen. Mm -hmm. You could have went and made it happen. Mm -hmm. You could still make it go happen. Yes. But are you doing what you need to do to go make it happen? You know, like it, it, stop having excuses. That's the whole thing. Have, stop having a pity party. You have, we are in the most, we have the most technology right now, the most access to information, and you can figure out where the information is on what's good and not good information. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's not all information is good information on the web. But you, you can tap into people around you. You can reach to people across the world through the through 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 the phone, mm -hmm. through podcasting, through listening. You know, so there is no excuse as to the only that you are where you are in life because you have yourself there. And it's a reflection of what you think you owe yourself. It's a reflection of how you see yourself. If you think you're not worth it enough, you're where you're at mm -hmm. because you think you're not worth it enough. Yes. If you think you are worth it enough, you're probably exactly where you need to be, but you probably need to get somewhere else and grow even further mm -hmm. than where you are, even if you are successful. Yep. Well, how, where else is this it? Or do I want to go somewhere else? Mm -hmm. Do I want, Where is the next level up? Like you said, I watched your podcast. I mean, your podcast, the, uh, I feel like it's a podcast. Your uh, story the other day, you were outside and you were talking about levels. Mm -hmm. uh, and you were saying that, you know, every level is different. Like if you're at a level, you could probably kick, pick, 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 pick back on it. But yeah. it was like, if you're at a level, you know, if you're, it's one to 10 and you think that you're at like a level eight and you're getting to like a level 10 or things getting easy for you, like how, how did that go? Cause that yeah. was like, that was a gym. Yeah, I man. was like, wow, I, that, I know exactly beautiful. what you're talking about. Um, Pretty much so, like, let's say, hypothetically, um, you're on level eight, right? And when you're on level eight, all you see is level ones through 10. So you're like, cool, I'm almost to level 10, right? And like, let's say in reality, there's actually uh, a level beyond that. Like once you get to 10, now levels 11 through 20 uh, get revealed. Once you get to 20, levels 21 to 30 get revealed. Right. But if you just keep on doing shit, level eight, level eight, level eight, you will never get to level 10 or maybe you do things to get you to level nine. Mm -hmm. And then what, for whatever reason, uh, life gets hard and then you just stop. <laughs> then it's yeah. like, oh, well, I almost made it to level 10 <laughs> and I almost achieved my potential. Yeah. And it's like, no, dude, you didn't get to level 10 and find out there, there's actually way more levels to that. But because you only stayed within this section, you think you actually achieved your potential. 
But um, I, I've heard it like this, and I didn't say it during my story, but uh, success is just the pursuit of our potential. Meaning that is like as we get more wins, as we become more and more successful, our potential becomes higher and becomes higher. That's why we can always get better. But if you never get better, then dude, you're going to think like, oh, well, uh, I'm almost there. I'm close enough. And that's good enough. And what you're going to do is you're going to surround yourself around people that make you feel that way. Yes. Yes. You, you're you not going to surround yourself around people that are going to make you feel like shit. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to stay in the same spot and be like. I like this little group. They make me feel like I'm on the top of the world. They talk great about me, whatever. But if you went around somebody else, they'd be like, you aren't doing nothing. You're, you're, you could do so much better. Some mm -hmm. people don't want to hear that. And yeah. some people aren't prepared for that. They're not ready for it. That's beautiful though. Like that whole level thing. It, I, I loved it. Cause I was thinking like, yeah, that, that's what I, I got when I was running. I was like, man, I feel good where I'm at and I'm the type of person I just don't go running with people. I don't go running groups. But I'm able to and not a lot of people are like this, I feel like and I'm not trying to put myself on a pedestal pedestal, but I'm not saying that I'm not up there because I don't have to go be around a lot of people to go in a, an environment. Maybe this is a negative thing about me, but to to level myself up or ask myself where am I going? Mm -hmm. I'm able to say no, Cedric, we're going to get down to that 6 minute mile per mile for 20 whatever miles. And I'm going to be there every day to kill you, to get you to that part, that part. You know, it just some people aren't really able to, you know, like you, for wake up and always constantly trying to hit a PR, trying to get more reps in, trying to more, more weight, whatever the case is, right? Um, but it's just the level I, I realized it because I was like, well, maybe though, maybe I need to get a mentor or start researching more to figure out, okay, well, what workouts is it that I need to do to get to that six minute? Mm -hmm. You know, because Cedric, you can think about it all day and do it yourself all day, but you can expedite it yeah, quicker by getting a mentor. Yes. You know, you're just making it hard on yourself and you don't have to like you just go to YouTube or find a mentor or find a running group or something if that's what you're trying to do to get you there mm -hmm. because it's going to take a little bit longer. But if you have somebody who's following you, so I'm working on it. I got the thought process, the seeds planted, mm -hmm. and I, it's just now it's just growing that seed to get yes. me to, to that next level because I want to get to that next level. I don't want to plateau. If I plateau, I don't want to live no more, mm -hmm. like quite honestly, because I don't see the point in living if you're not always growing. Like yeah. that's just my problem. That's why I have a hard problem talking around people who don't understand my language. That's because how we're supposed to be, though, man. We're not supposed to be complacent. We're not supposed to be okay with what we got. Like, yes, like... It doesn't matter how high you climb, you could always keep on climbing. And it's the moment that we think that like, okay, hey, uh, I've already achieved it all. Then now you're right, but uh, you're still wrong, right? You accepted that as truth. So now that's reality for you. But there's a difference between what you think is truth and absolute truth. Mm -hmm. And absolute truth lets us know that like we're supposed to keep on advancing forward. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to keep on this is biblical but we're supposed to keep on occupying until he arrives we're supposed to keep on mm. getting better dude we're supposed to keep on advancing forward because it's either fruit or no fruit we're mm -hmm. either getting better or we're getting worse we're either living or we're dying there is no maintenance mode there is no like okay i achieved this level I'm going to just chill here. I'm kicking it now. And it's like, nah, dude. It's like you're regressing now because you're not where you're supposed to be at this point in time. Like, yeah, you achieved X level of success, right, by let's say year 10. But like by year 11, let's say you're supposed to do X plus 10, but you only do X plus 5. It doesn't matter that you achieved X. You're now living less than where you have the potential on where you could have been. And now you're uh you're not who it is that you're supposed to be and then now you cannot help the people around you at the degree that you're supposed to help them just because you're not where you're supposed to be at right right and that kind of goes back to uh, uh what we were talking about earlier people using that excuse of like oh hey i'm not perfect it's like well yeah no shit none of us are perfect but at the same time <laughs> we we need to continue to strive for that it's like you know what i realized it is what's up? <laughs> i realized what it is is that whatever it is that you're doing or talking about they won't say it, but it's it's uh hitting something in them that is, it's it's a comfort thing for them. Yes, yes, you know? absolutely. Like, hey, man, I'm trying to stop this. 
oh, well, you know, no one will ever be perfect. And then that makes them feel comfortable with getting you to accept that logic Mm -hmm. of like, okay, well, at least I know that I'm okay because they kind of, but the minute that you say like, yeah, I know, but I'm still not going to, I'm still going to not do it. You know, then it makes, it makes them have to self-reflect like. They, they question it. And that's why I, I I talk this way because that's me helping. Because if I can get, I can get people to at least question like. Hmm, maybe what I thought to be true is not true. Yeah. If they are at least thinking that, then it's like, boom, that's a step forward. For sure. Instead of them just uh, relying on just what they were initially indoctrinated to believe. This and lie. They, yeah, it's I, like <laughs> you think what you first learned was truth, but and it could be partially true, but partial truth is not truth, right? Partial truth is still a lie. You know, It's not the absolute truth. It's yeah. when you know the absolute truth, when you then put yourself in a position to... Well, basically, advance forward, dude. Right. I agree. 100%. Um, let's see. Uh, I had something written down. I want to kind of... It's uh, nothing, hap- nothing happens out of accident. You make it happen. Mm, yeah, nothing happens to chance, man. Nah, like, like, and that's what you're talking about. Is yes. setting is setting the game plan, having purpose, mm-hmm. starting with the mind. And, and doing those habits, a lot of it can start with that journaling. Yes. You know, that it could really help. That's the whole thing is like, it's, uh, you know, you because what's going to happen is you set your New Year's resolution, which <laughs> got, uh, Joe Rogan said the other day, he was like, well, your New Year's resolution is only because it's shit that you don't do that <laughs> you're trying to do now. So it's like, if you were For already real, doing the habits, I think it's something he said, I don't mean to misquote, but he's like, if you're already doing the habits, it wouldn't be no New Year's resolution. It'd be another day. It'd be another year. Just continuing. Kind of like yes. setting new goals, I guess you could say, or higher goals or whatever. You know, I guess it is a form, but mm-hmm. I don't know. But uh, it's truth, once though. you get, yeah, it is the truth. Uh, once you get past the honeymoon phase, right? Like you were saying, motivation is great and it's a good starter. Inspiration is great. And you should be looking for it. But like once you're past that honeymoon phase, what are you going to do? Like once you pass all the good stuff and the shit gets real, right? Like the, the whole first week of let's say 75 hard, right? You feel good about it. You're like, mm-hmm. yeah. But then it's like once that honeymoon phase, quote unquote, cause you're telling your friends, Hey, I'm trying this thing and it, and it's awesome. I'm drinking a, you know, whatever, you know, they know whatever. And they're like, what? And you're all like, you're all on like, you know, cloud nine about it. Right. Cause it, it's cool. Like it, it, you know, a lot of people aren't doing it. You're doing, you're taking, now you get a taste of what it's like to take yourself out of the norm and put yourself in a different category. Mm-hmm. One thing that Goggins said in his book is like, you know, I'm not better than anybody, but we aren't equal. Mm-hmm. You don't do the things that I do. So no, we aren't equal. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean I'm better than you, but I don't speak the same language that you speak. Yeah. I don't speak. It's the weekend. Let's just drink all day on a Sunday and go get messed up at a tailgate. I don't speak that language. I speak a totally different language mm-hmm. of like, no, nah, it's Sunday. Let's go to church after church. Well, either I'm killing myself before or after church on like my body, mm-hmm. you know, like uh, whatever it is. It's just like we don't speak the same language. So, yeah, no, we may not be. I'm not better than you. I'm just not equal. We're not equal. Yeah. And I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't like being equal as people. That actually is what keeps me driving is like, man, if I'm not getting it in. I feel like I'm like that person. Yeah. Like you operate that way though. I, like, I, I, yeah. That's how yeah. I like, operate. Yeah. I mean, same dude. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. there's just power behind knowing you're doing some shit that nobody else is doing. Yeah. The term that Goggins uses is taking souls. There you like, go. Yeah, literally, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm out here in this, doing this rainy workout. There ain't nobody out here, but me taking right. everybody's soul. Taking and it's souls. like, yeah. if you're wired that way, then take advantage of that. Cause like that can, literally propel you to keep on going forward it's just have and again it's not that you think that you're better that like hmm, you're worthless and i'm not it's not no. necessarily that but it's you see yourself how high you really are because of what you're doing habitually and right. i mean right. a lot of these conversations it draws back to the habits because yeah. that's yeah. that's how powerful your habits are it's like you can determine somebody's future based off their habits. 100%. Based off their habits, you can determine like, okay, I see where you're going to go. It may not be anywhere close to that point right now, but like, uh, I mean, 
for some reason, the idea of like having a problem with drinking comes into mind. Mm -hmm. If like, uh, let's say you're somebody who used to not drink at all before, like you were just sober because that's just how you were. And then you got into drinking. Don't be surprised if you start to regress mentally. And then once you start to regress mentally, the physical world around you starts to regress. Like you start having problems with your money, you start having problems with your emotions. Yeah. You you start just letting slack everywhere because you were doing a habit or you are doing a habit mm -hmm. that leads to slack, right? And the thing is, and again, it's not to say that like, oh, um, you take that sip of alcohol, then it you already regress. It's just that what happens to most people because Honestly, most people yeah. they're they're not disciplined, dude. Yeah. It's like if you're yeah. a disciplined person, then you're an outlier. None of what I'm saying applies to you. But if you're not, if you don't have the degree of discipline to be able to handle that alcohol without it suffering anything, like if you're right here and it's only getting to right here, you're not gonna get climbed down. It's not. It's like a wave. It's not gonna take you. But if you your discipline is only right here, that alcohol wave, right? Those habits that keep you down, it's gonna knock you down. And you think you're still right here because it's like, dude, I'm a disciplined person. Nah, it doesn't matter what you used to do. It matters what you're doing right now. You're now operating right here and you're now attracting everything that's associated with this low level of living mm -hmm. because that's how it works. Yeah. And, and it all started because you went from somebody who didn't drink, who now can't control themselves and mm -hmm. drink it. I mean, you think you do because you used to be this disciplined. So in reality, you're able to convince yourself with a story of like, hey, dude, I, I am disciplined. I'm just choosing to get fucked up. Mm -hmm. And then I'm choosing to say, fuck my nutrition afterwards. And it's like, you really think you're making those choices? It's You're more than likely being drawn into it. Yeah. You're being pulled. It's it's uh, We talk about incremental growth. How about incremental regression? Yes, it it it, it's, it works. It's uh, it it's works that, both ways. It works both ways. It works both it, ways. It's that wave, you know. Yes. It, it starts off as a little small, small little thing, a sip or one drink or one shot or whatever, and it's because of a birthday. It's because hey, whatever, and then it just trickles. It, yes. It's a it's a it's like uh, from the movie Dope. You ever watch that movie Dope with uh, I forget. ASAP Rocky's in that yeah, movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. The slippery slope. Yeah, it's a slippery yeah, slope. Real talk. That's what we talked yeah. about. Slippery slope. You let one thing slide, it all slides. Mm -hmm. That's why when you get around people that are just straight, like, because I, my mom, I feel so sorry for her that I don't, but I, 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 I just, I know what I do to the my, the people around me. She'll like, they like, well, no, I, I know, like, not to ask you anything. It's like whatever, because it's like that's how Cedric is. It's just like no, like that's how we should, per, quite honestly, all be, because. You know, I don't bend budge for alcohol. Don't ask me for it. Don't. It's actually very disrespectful to ask me. I had a friend uh, that I hung out with like months ago mm -hmm. and she was like, you wouldn't even have a glass of wine with me. And I was like, in a very respectful way, I was like, no, like, honestly, I wouldn't chuckle a little bit. Like, nah, you know, I wouldn't. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. But they don't understand how disrespectful that is to ask somebody who who doesn't do that. Like, you don't understand what you're going to do to somebody who doesn't do that, who mm -hmm. lives a certain lifestyle. You're literally asking them to regress. Yes. You're asking yes. them to live a lesser life. Not saying that if you drink, your life is less. It's just your life. But for the for people who are trying to live that kind of lifestyle, who are trying to get better, you're, you're, you're um, like if someone's trying to eat better, right? They're trying not to eat fried food. And it's late and you ask them like, hey, let's go get some water burger. You're literally that one little thing. It's like asking a drug addict or something like, hey, it's giving them a little dose. And then they it could just send them on a uh, it could send them on a spiral. Mm -hmm. Don't dude, do that to people. Dude, it's like, Don't do that to people. It's, it's a middle finger to them, dude. It's, a, it, it's like, it, hey, it uh, I know your non-negotiable is to not drink, but uh, I don't care about your non-negotiable. That's not my non-negotiable because so for whatever reason. And so then you project, just, have, just have a drink with me because it's no big deal. It's like, it's no big deal to you because you don't live this way, but don't be disrespectful for you to you because... You, it's a non-negotiable for and you, and they it's, honestly don't care for you. Yes, and I, honestly, it could be even your loved one. They yeah. don't care for you. It's mm -hmm. it's it's bullshit. Yeah, it's a they're projecting their sorrow and misery, and I don't mean to like offend, but it's just like misery loves company, yes. and they want to make them feel better about themselves. So if they have you there and you're, they know 
that you're this thing, that you're great, but then they want to bring you in and make them feel better because they're like, well, I know they're doing good in life and they're living these good habits, but if I could just, they don't mean it. It's a subconscious thing. It's mm-hmm. like, it's like, dude, stop, stop doing that to people. It's like crabs in a bucket, dude. And it's do, like, do it's people like, understand that? I mean, dude, like basically it's like you, one crab, you're trying to get out of the bucket. The other ones are going to pull you down because you're trying to do something different. It's I wonder, like, I don't know if people under, know that. No, yeah, I mean, that's I why. Guess, that's, I guess not, dude, but yeah, that's like, how that's, crabs that's kill. How they work. That's how crabs kill people or kill each other. You put crabs in a boil uh, bucket, they're trying to get out. And what they're doing is the, the crab under them is grabbing their legs and the one under them is grabbing their legs and they just keep all pulling each other. And that's how they steam up together and they, they die. Mm-hmm. That's, but you're absolutely right, man. It, it's just the so, and that's why I try to say it is very, and a lot of people don't want to hear it because what you're doing is you're now asking someone to go from order of their family and friends to chaos mm-hmm. quickly. But it's like, figure that out. Learn how to gradually make a change Yes. Uh, in, in your life. And you need to, if you want to do better. If you don't want to do better, then yeah, like you said, this information is like, irrelevant. But if you're trying to better yourself, start asking yourself like, um, it is coming up on uh, the time that we talked about earlier. So we're going to wrap it up with this, but like start talking, uh, uh, like start with, uh, your goals, mm-hmm. a purpose, right? Cause you have a new year's resolution, which is a perfect time, which is what we talked about a month ago it was like, dude, I want to bring you on the week of when you get back. It's perfect. It's new year's resolution time to get people in their mind of give them a tool to kind of kick it forward. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like, uh, with having a, you already have your quote unquote goals, your new year's resolution. And hey, you should have a purpose with that. And the purpose could be uh, family, Mm -hmm. friends, yourself, Mm -hmm. whatever the purpose is. Um, And then no wishful thinking. It's not going to happen just because you're like, I want to be like this or in just because you talk about it and you post about it or whatever, doesn't mean it's going to happen. If you're not doing it when no one's looking and no one is out there with you, it's just you're not it's just you're just talking pretty much you're just talking shit and yeah. you like to hear yourself talk yeah. and you like the attention yeah. when you get the attention but what's going to happen is is there're going to be days where yeah if you're always posting on social media you're going to get attention but now you're probably doing it to motivate and help others mm-hmm. there's a totally different world. there's levels to that mm-hmm. you know um success is intentional right yes it's not absolutely. just going to come not wishful thinking but it's meant to you're making it happen through your journaling that you recommended that Andy Frisella recommended is uh, through, you know, date your journal so you can see your growth because it's beautiful to see. Start off with a passage of like about what you're thinking and then do the five critical things that are going to get you that aren't that don't come with ease that you already do. Mm -hmm. And but start prior to that in the morning, start prior to that with your basic habits of whatever your morning routine is and then go into that so that you go into it with a sense of like all right i've already done these things i took care of what i usually take care of right and then you start that journaling so you start with a a a win in itself a small win Mm -hmm. and small wins add up to big wins yes right every time and then um i just have it that you know put yourself in the right environment ask yourself if you're if you're in the right environment if you're not in the right environment you'll know because it does Ask what aligns with your life is what I'm trying to do right now with my resolution and stuff. Is that aligning with my environment? Yep. Am I not around books and I'm trying to read a lot? Well, get around some books. Uh, if you're trying to eat healthier, uh, look at your fridge. Mm-hmm. Is it is what it's in your fridge aligning with what you're trying to do? If it's not, get rid of it. Yep. Are your friends aligning with that's, what you're trying to do? That's the big one, man. It's the people around you. Like, if you're around people mm-hmm. who... Come a little bit closer. Oh, sorry about that. Good. No, you're good. You're it's good. like literally uh, people it's who perfect. like, uh, like they'll jokingly talk shit about what you're doing. Like, really? You're going to be disciplined on New Year's Day? Really? And it's like, those are the people you got to kind of like watch out for. Because if you really want to make a change and you're actually serious about it, like you're changing your habits... You're changing the way that you think. You're changing the way that you talk. But then these people, they talk shit jokingly. They're not talking shit jokingly. They're uh, they're projecting how they feel about themselves because they do not take the time to reflect on themselves. Yeah. Those that don't reflect, they project, right? Yes. So yes. it's like, dude, yeah. they're not taking the time to do any self-reflection. So it's just easier to criticize somebody because it's their way of making themselves feel better for more than likely their lack of action, their lack of progress, their lack of purpose, 
their lack of being of alive, dude. Yeah, yeah. Sarcasm is hostility being being released. Yes, that's what sarcasm is, mm-hmm. and that's what it could be. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah, change your environment. That's why I have. Uh, there was this guy, uh, Joel Osteen, was talking about, and he had an addiction to cocaine. And he asked him, like, how did you change that? Like, he said six months was the longest that he went without cocaine, and he had met Joel and told him about it. And uh, he said that what he did was that he changed his friends. That was the first thing that he did was he changed his friends. So change your environment, mm-hmm. literally. Uh, and then he seeked uh, help, counseling, God. Uh, if it's not God, seek a mentor. Seek somebody who is – look around and say, okay, where do I want to go? Who around me, if anybody, is there? And then ask them for advice. Mm-hmm. Don't talk to these people who are has-beens or – not has-beens, but, like, I don't mean to say it like that. If they have done it, cool. But, like, it, these um, – these people that are like, if, if somebody's never ran a marathon before, don't talk to people about running a marathon who's never ran a marathon. I mean, they're not going to give, I mean, they might give you some work ethic things and stuff like that. You know, just like, like for you, you could probably help me out with like the, the work instill of like, hey, said, it's going to take this mentally. You already know that, bro. But like, if you need any help sharpening that mental thing or holding you accountable if you're doing it, then yeah, because we get it, right? What it takes. Like, but as far as like if you're trying to get a, hit a, a certain time or a goal or whatever, go talk to somebody who's done it and uh, grab off of that. Like his, if somebody has like basically what I'm saying is if you're in a relationship and your relationship is not it's rocky, don't go talk to your single friend who's been single for like 10 years. Yes, man. they're not going to have a lick of nothing to tell you about. They're probably going to go make you regress because they're going to be projecting whatever is going on in their lives. Mm-hmm. Right. You gotta go so, to credible sources. Go to a cre- thank you, they, thank you for yeah. wrapping that up. Nah, nah, I was, nah, I'm nah, trying to get there. Nah, yeah, you're good, man. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was just like, I, I think this is where he's going. I was trying yeah. to get there. Yeah. Nah, you're good, so brother. If, you're, if you need a better relationship, go talk to somebody who's been in a 50 year marriage and hear what they have to say because they're gonna tell you, hey, man, it's not always sunshine and flowers and all beautiful birds. No, it's gonna be some dark days. Understand where you're at is okay. Mm-hmm. You know. So, yeah, credible sources is pretty much all I get to. And then also, I had, uh, the guy said that he had a friend who called to keep him accountable. Uh, he had a friend call him every man. day. So if you need to find that friend, right, reach out, whether it could be a, a, a partner, right? Your partner, like, hey, have a serious talk. Like, hey, I need you to hold me accountable to what I'm trying to do in life. Even if they're not doing it and y'all are on two, because naturally it may happen like that. Y'all are on two different wavelengths of like goals in life. Mm-hmm. But still, it's like, well, what are your goals? Okay, well, I'm going to hold you accountable to that. Well, these are mine. Let's agree to like see each other out on that. And when one's falling off, we're going to help each other build to that. Yes. Because it, it just may be different goals, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and also don't be too prideful to reach out. Definitely, man. Yeah. I mean, like uh, to help out. One, one yeah. thing I, I've heard yeah. uh, recently is uh, coaching is meant to provide clarity, right? So okay. coaching is meant to provide you with the answer that you're not able to see in the moment right because uh i mean i can't help but think what i do but it's not like oh hey uh maybe we just need to change the workout itself we need to change the nutrition it's like yes those could be it but it could simply be as like well um how are you thinking about it at before you're going to the gym or what are you thinking about as you're going through your day Mm. right are you focusing on giving up things instead of what you're getting like what we were talking about at the beginning of the uh, podcast so yeah yeah, it's like having someone to coach you will provide clarity whether that's an actual coach or somebody that you respect that you know they will be able to provide you clarity regardless on how you feel that's where kind of going back to the thing with Goggins having a team where not necessarily that they could run like him but they understood how he thought and that's the importance of having somebody who can keep on providing you that clarity because they know how it is that you think they know what it is that you want to do they know what it is that you can do in this moment and then of course they know that whenever um, you're feeling a way that's just off from your usual self, like yeah. they, can, they can determine all those things. Yeah. And by them being there to provide that clarity, you're always going to basically have that solution no matter how you're feeling, right? Like if you end up feeling frustrated and things like your planning is just starts to get dulled a little bit because like you're just not operating in the best space, they'll be able to basically see things from a third person perspective and be like, Hey man, uh, have you thought about doing it this way? Have you thought about like, uh, 
focusing on what you're going to get from the workouts instead of like, oh, what you're having to give up. Right. I'm just using that as an example. Yes, yeah. But I mean, yeah. literally, that's the power of coaching slash accountability slash a team. I mean, there's power in team. There's power in unity. We are meant to be united one way or another anyways. Yeah. You know, so yeah. um Sorry, I, I couldn't help but just want to share that point because no. it's it's powerful, dude. You should, yeah, yeah absolutely, and uh, it's it's valid. It's what you do. It's what I'm working on doing this year is working on the team, my accountability, holding other people, getting people aligned for their life. I am about to come into and live, mm -hmm. and uh, I I I know 2023. I prayed on it prior to. I think I did the night before the run. I was praying to God about. Um, this is the foundational year, uh, and this is the year that I am going to put in, uh, this year is actually called, I wanted to share it with you. I'll get you a shirt that says it. Um, this year is called every, everybody has a theme, right? This year is called fearlessly disciplined. Mm. I, uh, shared it on my last podcast, but it said something about if, um, fear exposes where your where you're scared of like where your growth is it shows where your lack is in your growth like mm -hmm. fear does like whatever you're afraid of is showing your lack of like in your growth so if you're afraid of uh i want to i'm gonna pull it up because i'm gonna but i did it even last time i pulled it up uh, but I, I don't want to butcher it um i get it uh, something i've heard that's um yeah, for, coming to mind is uh adversity reveals a man to himself like who you are you under adversity that's really you. Yeah. You're not you when things are good. You're you whenever shit hits the fan. Yeah. Like how you respond, um, how you're thinking, there you go. how you're acting. That's really who you are. That came to mind whenever you mentioned that just now. And that's true. I like that better, actually. I'm <laughs> actually going to watch that later on and put that into my notes. Uh, fear reveals where you are not free. Yeah, man. Straight Shows where up. you're trapped at. Yes. In your mind, mentally, everything. So yes. this year is called Fearlessly Disciplined. Anytime that I sense fear or I feel regression, I'm running towards it, not yeah. running from it. Cool thing I want to share. I saw this on a reel. Talked about cows and buffaloes. Do you know the difference between cows and buffaloes? So I know, right? It sounds funny, <laughs> yeah, right? This, nah, is really, this is really interesting. I'm actually interested. Yeah, yeah. cool. Because <laughs> uh, cows and buffaloes. Um, so in a storm... When a storm is coming, cows and buffaloes both sense it. They can they, they sense the storm is coming. Mm -hmm. The difference between the two is, is that the cows will run towards the storm. Oh, sorry, uh, the the buffaloes will run towards the storm. The cows will run away from the storm. Mm -hmm. All right. So the thing is, is that storms coming, they both sense it. Buffaloes are going towards. Cows are running away. So as the storm's coming, these cows are running away from the storm. The storm's going to catch them eventually, mm -hmm. but they just keep running away from it. Eventually, they get tired, and they're all dogged out, and they're just they're, they're tired of running. Mm -hmm. Well, the storm catches their catches themselves and is just pouring on them. They're tired. They're just draining in it, right? The buffaloes, on the other hand, have ran towards it. So, yeah, you're in the storm, but you're running past it. You're running towards the storm, and eventually that storm passes quicker than anything because you're already running towards it. Mm -hmm. And then they get to re they get to reap the benefits of the water that's there, the plants that are growing, everything that all the, the everything that comes with the what you know rain brings. Yeah. And yeah. so it's like basically it's like you know the storm's gonna catch up to somebody eventually in life. You're gonna run towards it and get through it because it's gonna happen eventually. Or are you just going to let it catch you and let it control you or dictate it? So how, basically, are you going to dictate your life or let life dictate you? Meet is the what fear, it, dude. Meet the fear yeah. is basically what yeah. it is. So fearlessly disciplined all year. Anytime that I'm feeling like I don't want to say something to that person uh, respectfully mm -hmm. uh, or I don't want to go do that action or I don't want to get up or whatever, run towards it mm -hmm. and get it done. Yes. You know, I'm not going to let that beat me up because it's going to kill me throughout the day yep. You know, or whatever. Um, I wanted to give a quick shout out, uh, to Joey, right? Joe, is Joe, Joe? My, yeah, Joe? My, my buddy Joe. Gangsta? Yeah, yeah gangsta. Yeah. Yeah, man. What's that about? Yeah. That's all you wear. It's, it's, uh, his brand, um, I mean, um, pretty much, uh, I like to support him for one, cause, mm -hmm. uh, what he's done for me, um, from a business standpoint, from, uh, he's honestly played a role in like, um me having a restored relationship with God, like straight up, dude, wow. you know? So yeah. like, I mean, that's, that's life changing. That's powerful. 
you know, um, but yeah, his brand is a uh, gangsta, like gains, like gain to advance forward. But you know, gangsta. Like, yeah, a gangsta. Yeah, yeah. You know? I get gangs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he get gangs. <laughs> he's a gangster. Gangs, yeah, you know, I, I love it, dude. Yeah, man. It's, uh, yeah. So it's G A. Cool. So people, if they still haven't got it yet, it's G A I N G S T A. Yeah, yeah. gangsta. Gangsta. Yeah. yeah, it's so dope. Yeah, it's cool, man. It is. Yeah. It's a it's a play on with words. It's so awesome. And, and it's he's yeah. definitely uh, come a long way, dude. Like I remember, it was like towards the end of 2021, whenever he was really starting to pop off with his things, and just everything's better. Like uh, the way yeah. that he um, ships the merchandise, the quality of the merchandise, you know. Um, but yeah, so I'm I'm stoked for him and all that's to come. Awesome, for man. Him. Yeah. I plan on possibly having him on. Uh, yeah, man. So for sure. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He's 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 cool. I remember him back whenever I used to go train with you. I'd see him in there, yeah. training and stuff. Um, any last remarks, Chris? Before we get out, brother, I appreciate one. I appreciate you coming on again. It was it was a good one. Yeah, it's great, it. man. It, it's uh, gonna get better and better, man. It is. Like it's it's been it's an honor to come on here every single time, dude. Um, as far as last words go. I mean, we've been talking about it like through the entire podcast. It's like your habits are going to determine everything. What you habitually do is the reason why your life is the way that it is. And whether that's a good thing or a negative thing, it's literally up to you. There are always things that you can control no matter how chaotic your life may be. There are always things that we can control like uh how we respond, what we put into our brain, what we put into our body, you know, from a workout standpoint, you know, how hard we push ourselves, uh, how willing we are to go through discomfort. Those are all well within our control. And if your habits are right, your world will be right. Like, that's just the way that it goes, dude. Hmm. It's just the way that it Does goes. Does it mean that it's going to be an easy world? No, that's not what it means. But if anything, it... it's, it's going to be hard either way. You choose your heart. It's as simple as that, dude. Like, uh, you either, you either kick your own ass so life doesn't do it, or if you don't kick your ass, life's gonna kick your ass over and over and over again until you learn the lesson that you need to learn, so that way you can dominate the things that you've been called to dominate. Not people, but things. Be the buffalo, not the cow. Yes, run, be the buffalo. Run not towards the cow. that storm. Run towards the storm. Meet the fear. And for people who's first time watching this and uh, getting to witness you for the first time, where can they find you at, and what services do you offer? Uh, for Chris Moreno training. Yes. Um, so you could find me on my website, Chris Moreno training.com. Uh, I'm on Instagram at Chris Moreno training. Um, services I provide is a uh, coaching uh, through fitness and nutrition and other essential disciplines. We work to build ourselves to be the most confident and honestly best version of ourselves, right? To where, we're controlling all the things that we're able to control on a regular basis. And it's just, uh, simply put, it's just a way for me to be able to help people like become who it is that they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Because I know what, not just what fitness has done for me, but all the disciplinary habits that I've instilled, what it's done for my life and what it has produced for me, you know, physically, mentally, spiritually, financially, emotionally, literally all aspects of my life mm -hmm. have gotten better from just these essential disciplines. And I'm here to help those that I'm here to help those that I've been entrusted to help. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, y'all can entrust him if you're serious about it yes. and he'll get you there. Yes. Uh, man, it was a great one. Thank you for coming on. I uh, can't wait to have you on again. Good luck with your second round or your extra round of 75 hard right, thank you very much man. i want to bring you on mid to end of it because i want to see where your mind's at and uh i want to bless you for your year we're gonna have a great year dude we're yes, gonna help sir, out we we're gonna help out so many people this we year will. it's we gonna will. be like the end of last year was just or this past year was just the not even the brink of what's about to happen this year is going to be a an abundance of just beautiful blessings that are yes. going to come and, and i can't wait and yes. i hope those people that we help help other people too they will, man. They will. They will, man. I love like that. that. There that, you go. They will. It's like we don't even have to hope or that, try. That's, that's all we have to do, man. That's the sole purpose of what we do is to help other people so they will help other people. Yes. And, and we're doing that. And uh, we got a, I got a, uh, I got a glimpse of that last year, and, and I, I love it, man. So, again, thank you for your friendship. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be checking in with you. And Likewise, man. It's, it's awesome, man. But thanks, brother. Yes, sir. For sure. Yeah, man. Appreciate right. you, man. Thank uh, you. Thank you, all everybody, for watching. Love yourself so that you can go love someone else.
Yes. All right, dude. Yes. Cool. Awesome. That's it.